listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Shalom. 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 I can't hear me. Can y'all hear me? They can barely hear me. It is important faith come by. And the reason why a lot of people in the world don't have faith because they won't hear. That's an interesting concept, isn't it? Think about that for a minute. You wouldn't be able to believe to the level you believe to today until you heard because reading ain't done your liquor good. Oh. Oh, I, Huh? The Bible didn't say faith come by reading because it did. Look, 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 with all the people that profess Christ in this world, this world wouldn't stand a snowball chance in hell. The devil would be on the run big time, wouldn't it? So that can't be it then. Abba Yahweh, we thank you for all things, for your magnificent, wonderful name that you have declared unto us by the holy prophets, the Messiah. The one who gave himself for us to make sure that we're redeemed. Our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for this, we're ever grateful for. We thank you for allowing knowledge of you, you, to be increased in this last hour that we're living in. Continue to strengthen us by your truth and your word that we will bring forth fruits as a holy nation. That sinners will be converted in the magnificent, mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Almighty Yahweh himself, Jesus the Christ. Uh, speak to us. Your words of truth here this day and let these sins sink deep down in our hearts. Amen. You may be seated. Israel. All right. We got a little ground to cover here today. And uh, you remember last Shabbat I kept emphasizing over and over and over again. It's very, very important. Very important that you pay attention to me. Do y'all see the reason why it was important for you to pay attention to me last Shabbat? Are you following me? And it's equally important that you do the same thing today. All right. We're going to cover a little bit. So I'm going to try not to procrastinate. Too, too much, uh, if that's all right. You understand what I mean? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to the King. Are y'all doing all right? Can y'all hear me? Oh, no wonder y'all can't hear. The mic is, is, is pointing the opposite way, and it keeps doing it. Can't imagine all that going out over there. <laughs> People wondering what in the world's going on. Brother Asus, how you doing, brother? What y'all do? Drive all night? Yes, sir. You and Cool James there, brother? Man, y'all getting after it, ain't it? Y'all all right? Y'all gonna be able to pay attention today? Y'all need some water? Let me put some on y'all. Throw some on you. All right, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. It's, it's wonderful to be in the faith. It, it really, truly is. And, um, uh, you know, you, you start thinking about um, where we're at in time. And, um, and, and I can't help but to think. I'm going to let you in on my thoughts, okay? When I see all these people that come to the meetings, I cannot help but to think what would happen if those who are real, true, and hard, if everybody put their resources together, what kind of place could be built? But we love our individuality. We love the way of the Gentiles. Don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yes, you, yes, we do. And of course, then you got the haves and the have-nots. You have those who, who have uh, feel like that they shouldn't have to give. I've had people in the past come to me and say, Pastor, should I sell my house and sell my land and stuff? Is that what I'm going to need to do? I look at them and go, no. 
Don't y'all know I'm wise enough by now to, to be able to tell if your heart is ready? You weren't going to do it anyway. See, a lot of times people ask questions like that lace and stuff because they want to be able to say, I did go to him and he said no. If I'd have told you, yeah, you wouldn't have done it anyway. So you should be glad that I didn't bind you. I already know your heart. Because when people want to give all, they don't go, you don't have to go to them and ask. Y'all see how far we are from the faith? Mm -hmm. Y'all should be tired of playing church by now. I'm going to tell you the real reason why. Because a lot of times when people come here, some people will look at this place and they'll go, oh boy, hmm, it's just a pretty nice little simple place. Some people have the discernment to look out and say, but this is too much work. Because we don't hire contractors. Uh-oh. Are y'all listening to me? We don't have stewards and maids that come in and wait on us. Brothers and sisters equally alike have a full plate around here. We work hard. And most of y'all can't do that. Because the Gentiles in this world screwed you up. You so scared of hard work? Look at them looking at me. There you are. As if it's going to kill you. It ain't kill those after all these years, have you? It, it, we definitely getting older. Sure. Hadn't killed us though. Huh? Look at him. You know I'm telling the truth. Oh, I love to be on the community, really. Let's see how hard you want to work. Because we work every day. I was talking to Sister Carol this morning. I said, because somebody had called. And I said, you know, I don't understand how in the world I make all these videos and people think I'm your typical pastor. And then they get mad at me. Not only do I have to run and go get the building materials, and while a brother and are getting stuff together while we're back here, when I get back here, I have the logistics to do, and not only that, I have to work too. I have to divide my time up into, man, I'm divide time, times, and dividing the times. Y'all hear me? Jeez. But this place was built by blood, sweat, Tears, oh yeah, it was pain, anguish. See out there in the Gentile world, all you got to do is go move into a place already set for you. Turn on the air conditioning. Turn off the air conditioning. Turn on the heat. Turn off the heat. Look at I'm looking at me, and you act like we ain't never lived like that before. Huh? I remember coming home from work after a long, hard day's work. I stepped into the house. It was like the Antarctic. Because we like a cold house, especially in that Louisiana summer. And you know it's hot in Louisiana, brother. It is blistering hot in Louisiana. In Louisiana, they got, they got critters and reptiles and animals and stuff that, that they don't even have on National Geographic. Remember that time he tell you about the story when we was um, when I was in JRTC and stuff, and I, I woke up because it gets cool at night. And I woke up and I um, look over to the next of me, and there's a snake. Thought I was a log, keeping itself warm. Look at him looking at me. Hmm. Another time after we got finished humping and stuff, I went over and found me a tree, put my rucksack up against it. I went to sleep. All of a sudden, I heard something go, Shh. open my eyes, and there that snake was right there. I said, dang it. I said to him, I said, this booger got to drop on me. <laughs> and we sit like that for the better part of five minutes. I didn't move. He didn't move. Y'all think I'm kidding? No, sir. <laughs> like this. My eyes was glued and its eyes was glued. And finally it decided to turn and go, man, I jumped up quick as I could, brother. (laughs) 
You know what to do us Americans a bunch of good? Is to live in third world order status for about three months. It'll help you out for about two weeks, and then you'll quickly revert back to your American mindset. Right. Amen. That's, the truth. Oh, yeah. Amen. So true. That's why we're an ungrateful, unthankful, unholy generation. But guess what? Third world status coming anyway. Oh, yeah. Now you think about this. The Bible says that the children of the world are wiser than the children of life. Do y'all hear what it says? You got these people out here called prepper groups. They are preparing for something that the rest of the Gentiles in the world can't see. They already know, first of all, government is supposed to be there for your security and your general, general welfare against any enemies. That's the reason why we pay taxes. They're supposed to there, be there to protect the citizens. That's their job. And the leaders are there to ensure that the citizens can live a life of peace and happiness without any foreign invasion. Well, what do we do when the government is jacked up by foreign invaders who are posing as people like you? See, there are other people out here that know this just like I do. It goes all the terrorists out there, the FBI, the CIA, the TEA, and, and all the other uh, uh, national, what do they call them, TSA, and they're, no, they, who else? all these other alphabet soups. They just cover them all that way. And then they all are looking at us as if we are the enemies, and we're the one paying them to, to exist. Well, now we can't really say we're paying anybody to exist because they're printing money. So when we start talking printing money, you, have, you don't know what that means. Unless somebody explain it to you, but you really truly don't know what it means. You go to work, you get paid, you get a few Federal Reserve notes in your hand, nothing's changed for you except prices have gone up. You have no idea what's going on. We can tell you all day long that life as you know it is over. And you'll go, oh, yeah, and you ought to see how quick we adjust. Every single time, something goes up. And we never make any changes. You see that? Because uh, we're going to hold on to this American dream, which has turned into a nightmare as long as we can. We're going to clutch this phony ideal just like a wino does its bottle. But Yahweh had a plan. And these all have in one mind. Uh-oh. And you can't do that today. Because the government, the world has a government. It has an authority structure set up and stuff. And it, Y'all assembly has a government too, but nobody wants to submit that government. You know why? Because we've been too busy, been influenced by the Gentiles who has given us perceived freedoms and liberties. And anytime we don't like y'all's righteous government, we just rise up. We kick the traces. Don't worry about it. We got it now. We always can contingency plan. We can fall back to the ways of the Gentiles. And the government, you should be thanking the Father out there. I mean, I got people all over this land. We could just tax your system half the day by literally getting everybody on food stamps. We could actually go get food stamps and then store food. Couldn't we? Yeah. It's a shame. And they want to sit there and tax me. Whoo, unbelievable, isn't it? All this is written about in the book. So everybody don't want to be the saint you think they want to be. But let me tell you what's in people's mind. What's in people's mind is I'm going to stay out here in the cities. I'm going to stay out here with the Gentiles. I'm not going to make any moves whatsoever at all. I'm not going to try to get close. I'm not going to try to lend a hand. I'm not going to pitch in. I'm not going to help. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to support. But when crap hits the fan, I know exactly where I'm coming. I'm going the straight way. And boy, are you going to have a rude awakening. Right now, we're in the green. We can't even get people to obey. How are we going to do it in the dry? Think about it. It's easy right now. I tried my best in YouTube videos to try to tell y'all the nature of human beings. Pastor Fox tried to tell you the nature of human beings all the time. But we will not change our minds for nothing. And we just think because we're benevolent. 
that, that you have a fallback plan and it's us. <laughs> Boy, you in trouble. You in serious trouble. I ain't reading no letters this week because we need to get started. We got, we got a little bit to cover here. We're going to talk about how to increase faith. We need this. And you're not going to go search the internet and find a lesson plan on this. It's not in your Pentecostal handbook either. <laughs> Y'all listen to me. You ain't going to find it. It ain't in there. Come straight hot off the press. But we need to start thinking about this. I'm going to show you how different our mindset is. Whenever somebody says there's something, we automatically take it for face value, don't we? Yes, yeah, we do. Yeah, we, most of the time we do. Well, anyway, John the Baptist is in prison, wasn't he? Yes, hmm? Sent two disciples to ask Jesus, yep. are, are, you, are, you, are you the one or should we seek for another? Yep. Come on, you know the answer he gave him? Hmm? I healed the sick. Yes. The dead are raised. Come on. Oh, yes. Yes. The sight are restored to the blind. Come on. Yeah. Uh-oh. Them two took back the report to John. What did he say? You know the reason why John knew who he was? Because he was a prophet, the greatest prophet that ever lived. That's what Messiah said. So since he's the greatest prophet that ever lived, he already know what his brothers that have gone on before him said. That the Messiah would be and do. They spoke in code. He said, oh, really? That's it? Herod? Y'all not to have your brother's wife. That's yeah. head chopped off. Yes, sir. He said, man, I can go now. Hallelujah. He's here. Yep. <laughs> Most of you, you think if Jesus came today that you would know him. You don't know the prophets. You don't know the law, but you think you would know him. If he showed up today. Well, thank y'all he ain't showing up until he comes back in his kingdom. Because if we were back in that day as blind and dumb and dormant and docile and stupid as we are today, we wouldn't know him. No, he wouldn't. Uh-oh. That's why I keep telling us over and over again, you can't be too sure of yourself lest you fall. These were humble men. And you look how John the Baptist spoke to the establishment. Yeah, Would you speak like that to him? Not. Nah. And everybody want to be prophets. These are the most plus prophets ever seen in my life. <laughs> they got long fingernails manicured and toenails manicured and hair done and what do you call a met metro faggot? <laughs> Metrosexual. That's what it is, metrosexual. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine, can you imagine trying to picture John the Baptist metrosexual? <laughs> John came here today, man, most of you turn him away. Look at that stinky man. Who in the world do you think he is with that locust? Look, he got, he got, got camel's hair on. First thing you do is start throwing a toy on him. Don't you know you ain't supposed to be wearing no unclean animal? If John pulled out a sword and cut you, I'd look at you. Because you talking to a man ain't afraid of death. <laughs> Y'all see how far we removed? We have been good Gentiles. We're good goyims. Right here. We're good goyims. Mm -mm -mm. Bro, Shane, how long ago was that? I was—I I can't remember if it was at a—I can't remember what church it was. You had some some na nasty-looking guys walk in. Then you had these guys come in with nice clothes. They expect to get up in the pulpit. I ran them boogers out of there and put the the people that are less esteemed. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Of course, you know, religious folk got mad at me, mother. They—they they did. They got mad at me. And then this woman started with her mouth. You shut up. <laughs> you don't tell the mother of the church to shut up. Well, I just did. 
Jesus. We're in trouble. And if we don't divest ourselves of this mindset, what was that woman, brother, that led that little poor deacon in, brother? I mean, she, she even walked like a man. She's about as tall as Erica, and she walked like John Wayne. She came busting through that door. What was that at, Brother Shane? Mount, me on Mount Zion. In Mount Zion. I can show you the church building. That booger told me, somebody said something about something he, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, she come walking in the assembly like this. She looking at the, come out. Get over there, sit down. That poor man, he he walked just like this too. Am I exaggerating, brother Shane? He was. She got up there, that poor pit boy, and she hunkered down. She put, she planted one foot like that, and other foot like that. You know what I mean? I'm in a flat foot preach. I've seen some stuff that religious people do is just crazy. Didn't folk get mad at us? Elder, I know you think I'm kidding. Oh, Elder Austin sent me a, that's why I was wearing this shirt this morning. Elder Austin, I just opened up the mail. Elder Austin sent me a shirt this morning. And it said, Samson Strong. Isn't that nice? Samson Strong. Isn't that beautiful? Hmm. My son, begotten in the faith. So I got plenty of sons and daughters. Plenty of them. Oh, he made a video this week, too. Whoo-wee. That was a good one, too, son. Man, man, man. You know the reason why many people can't live and do the way we're doing? Because this is not a self-serving lifestyle. This, this is all about the kingdom. Are y'all getting this? This is simply all about the kingdom. Now we do know that one day all this stuff is going to stop. Now we try to make sure that we, well why y'all think we build all these little guest homes around here just so we can just entertain the guests? Yeah, we do that, right? Huh? The piss heads too. Can you believe somebody did that, Brother Jesus? I kid you not, brother. We, we discarded the job. But these, these are little buildings because family's going to come and we're all going to be stacked up like sardines and so much for the living like the plus lifestyle. This is going to stop. I know. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But, and Elder also said, and you people are something else out there. You think you done done something, you're really truly dependent on the labor of others. And then you act like you've done something and you ain't did nothing. You're just benefiting off the labor of others. Well, I was there also, 27 years old. How old is Chuck? That's how old Austin is. I think they're one day apart. Elder Austin. That man, that young talking like that, it remind me of me. On fire. Mm. Isn't that all right? Yes, this brother understand the seat, but we're going to get started here because I don't wanna, I want to, I really truly need y'all undivided attention though, okay? Yes, I really truly do. Um, but you've got to get rid of this American lifestyle. Sure, and you, I'm telling you, it starts here. You got to be transformed right here. Before anything else will take place, it got to take place here first. Are you following me? And we got, don't everybody want to know how to increase faith? Everybody want to know? Sure you do. You see, because without faith, you can't do the works. And without faith, you can't please Yah. And without faith, you can't be a son of Abraham. I mean, this is big. This is big. How we doing back there, Brother Shane? We doing all right? Well, we're going to go ahead and get started then. 
I, I know I put my picture mug up there because you're listening to me. But no matter where you at, you better hope that you find uh, some pastors that after y'all's heart. I'm telling you, because you ain't going to do it without it. That's a prophecy. You better find some. And there's a lot of them that call in themselves pastors. I'm, I'm telling you, you better know them. Yahweh's perspective and how he views unrepented sins, be it of you, of your fathers. Now, we're going to drive this point home again, okay? Because I do not want any of us to be deceived. That's the reason why the ministry of deliverance is, is, is needed in the hour that we're living in. Because it's the ministry that gives us the understanding of spiritual things. Without it, you can't understand it. You're just going to function like the rest of the other Gentiles, okay? So we need to understand some things, okay? We have been taught in the world that if we sin, we just repent, that cleans the slate, we're finding good. And I'm telling you, that's a half truth. Every evil, every iniquity, everything you've ever done, you're going to pay for it here and now. And then if you haven't repented in, uh, in reference to salvation, you're going to be paying for it for eternity. See, Christianity ain't never told you that. That's why you keep sinning. Nobody's ever really put the word or truth on you the way it should be. That's why you ain't scared of the Father. You know, usually children, even though they love their father, they have a reverence for him. Yeah, they do. They automatically have a reverence for him. There's, there's a, a godly fear. There's that. We, American Christianity and all these other philosophies has removed that fear. That's why people can feel like they can go out and just sin and just keep on sinning and just say, oh, I'm sorry. And end up in a cardinal reprobate mind. But let's let's we're gonna go we're gonna go to the book, okay? Because I want this driven home. You see, because not only do you need to repent of your sins, you've got things that are in you that your fathers have done that you haven't even repented of. You never heard about everybody say they just like their daddy, yeah, just like their mama. Yeah, what you think that's a positive statement? No. You think about that. Listen to the book, okay? Let's go to the book, all right? All right, Shemot 34, verse 5. Going to, we're, going, we're going to be in both verses, King James and the Scriptures, okay? Let's go to verse 5. Right and Yahweh came down in the cloud and stood with him there, talking about Moshe, and proclaimed the name of Yahweh, the Yordhead Vahe, okay? He proclaimed the name, the authority, the power, the government, the whole nine yards of them, all right? He gave it to Moshe, all right? Because Moshe was the custodian of the law. Is that true? Yes. Listen to the book right here, Shemot 34, verse 6. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh. Yahweh and El compassionate. And showing, what does he do? Favor. What else? Patience. And great in kindness and truth. We've all been recipients of that. Is that true? We've all been recipients of that. Okay, watch this now. Look at this. Verse 37, verse 7, watching over kindness for thousands. He's watching over kindness for who? Thousands. thousands. You know, he, he is bent on wanting to do his people good. Yes, sir. Look at this. Forgiving crookedness. Can we say we've been a recipient of that? Yes, Look at this. And transgression and sin. Are you following me? Look, watch this. But by no means. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh. Well, now come the philosophy of Christianity where they dress everything up for you. We ain't going to dress it up. You need to know your father. You need to know your father. You need to know him as father. Uh-huh, because you know him as Elohim, you're in real trouble. And there's a difference. Huh? You look at this, look at this. But by no means leaving unpunished. Wait a minute, I thought you forgave us everything of our crookedness, our transgressions, our sins. What do you mean by no means leaving unpunished? What? You mean tell me? That's why I keep trying to bring all these accounts up to you. You know, Carl, Dathan, and Abiram, they thought they were the stuff. Huh? Huh? They paid for theirs and went down to life, went into the pit of life. Now, the best example you can use is David. 
There's no greater, he, he, there's nobody in this generation that has ever showed any repentance for any, any, for any sin like Dawid has. This man was fasting and praying. After his sin was made known to him. The father even said that he even put it away from him. He went to the temple, fast, prayed the whole nine yards. Saying, how are we going to know if the father's going to be merciful or not? Did he not ask for forgiveness? Yes, yes he did. He saw his way. Yes, he did too. Yes, yes he did too. Are y'all listening to me, Israel? Hallelujah. Remember, we're dealing with the, the Elohim of the universe Hallelujah. who is kind, forgiving crookedness, transgression and sin. Oh, he forgave him. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. He still took the baby, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So much for the law being done away with then, huh? Eye for an eye, yep. tooth for a tooth. You're going to let Christianity dress up your mind? They've done a good job at removing the fear of y'all from you. That's why we act like a bunch of banshees and hyenas and jackals yes, running around this free, free floating grace. Grace teaches me, don't you go out and do that. But why? Because I don't want the other end of this just Elohim. Uh oh. Then not only that, God still wasn't finished with him. Oh, I, okay, I'm sure you saw it, but guess what? The sword ain't going to depart from your house now. What? You mean tell me the things that I do? My generations behind me got to pay for it? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, you foolish fathers. Whatever you do, your descendants who you say you love so much is going to pay for your iniquity and transgression. Well, we go back to the commandments. Forgiving the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, unto the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me, but so in mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. Hallelujah. What? Third and fourth generation? Right. Somebody need to tell you everything you've done when your children go through all that calamity. Now, don't get me wrong. When they get old, they go visit sin for themselves. Yes, Because yes, you've already warned them they can't no longer cry wolf, play victim, blame shift, mom and dad, mom and dad. No, mom and dad wasn't there with you when they have already told you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Now you're personally responsible for your sins. Uh oh. See, we don't know, we don't we do not know this Yahweh. Because if he been priest. By the Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. If people tell me, why, why in the world that, that, that is, you know, this is what sticks out in history more than anything. Every time the temple got tore down, they want to rebuild it again. I don't know why they keep rebuilding, they never have respect for it. Did I just say something wrong, brother? Am I, am I, am I in the wrong place or what? If the temple is a place of worship and it was, why can we never have no re respect for it? Oh, no wonder you treat your bodies like you do. Hmm? Hmm? See, the rock don't fall too far from the tree then, do it? You just like your ancient people. Are ye not the temple of Yah? Who temple of Yah? So what house are you going to build him? Yah don't dwell in a temple made with hands. They had all these temple sacked and stuff, never had any respect. And then even after 70 years, 70 years, 70 A.D., after the turn of the century, 70 A.D., the Romans come down, and what is remembered more than anything when they sacked Jerusalem? They sacked the temple. They took the furniture and made an ark of Titus. And what do they have on that ark? The menorah and the furniture of the temple. And the Romans are letting you know, we got y'all. Yes. We got who? Come on. We got y'all Hebrews. Mm -hmm. We done took your religion. That's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Then they enslaved us, put us in captivity. Mm -hmm. Then they, they scholars read our book. And they intermingled and intertwined the Babylonian Talmud and all the other rest of the philosophies of Zeus and Aphrodite and, and uh, uh, what's that other guy named? Whole bunch of gods. Greek, they got all kind of gods. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they gave you the religion of Christianity. And you still function after that. And when somebody come hollering and screaming trying to tell you, listen to Israel, this is what happened to us. I oh, shut up. I like where we live in. Yeah. At least over here, we get to live with, it, with, with the Gentiles in peace. Yeah, you get to live in peace as long as you do what they say. Yeah. Try to obey y'all and see what happens. Yeah. Let's see how much peace you got then. Yeah. You're lying hypocrite. Right. Right. Uh-oh. Yeah. And y'all still don't see what's going on. If you go by my house any part of the day, you may hear screaming, hollering, screaming. There's somebody in there. You may hear some hollering, screaming. I ain't hollering, screaming for I'm mostly preaching. How in the world do people cannot see what's going on today? Did the Bible say there's nothing new under the sun? Yep. Do y'all know that these Romans, these Europeans, these Greeks, these, they still are doing the same thing. They're still conquering the whole world today. Still conquering the whole world day. And what are they doing? They're still fighting against the Ottoman Empire. They just don't call it the Ottoman Empire no more. You ever heard of the, the country called Britannia? What is it called today? Somebody say Britain. Jeez. Are you serious? You ever heard of Germania? What is it called today? Somebody say Germany. Come on. You all dumb down good old subject Americans. And you proud of being American. You don't even know who you are. You fighting for the Romans. These people that the powers that be, they know what's going on. They're the movers and shakers of this earth. That's been, they had their philosophy passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. They know exactly what they're doing. And then they turn around and they build a school called public school system. Then they give you a federal curriculum to make sure you're dumbed down and trained in the finer arts of stupidity. And you think you know something. You think you're even functioning right. And can't nobody reason with you because you don't know the scriptures. You're going to get educated in their schools. Y'all raise up a biscuit crumb snatcher from the monks of Miss of Israel and stuff to tell us and remind us of who we are. I don't have to hear that. Come on. We're a perfect example of our people. These are still nations against nations. And this is still kingdoms against kingdoms. I told you one, I told you a thousand times, follow that eagle. Russia still got the eagle. Germany got the eagle. Yeah, they do. They all got the eagle. Yeah, they do. And American damn so got the eagle. And, and, and the nations that they're beating up on now, they all got the moon. And on the other end, you got the sun. Come on, come on, amen. And y'all still thinking that this just anyway, anyway. No wonder you don't know nothing. And then you go out there and listen to these people that would tickle your ears. Can't see the forest for the trees. And they've taught you to fear y'all by the precept of man. And it still ain't done you no good. So we're going to get the right Elohim priest today. Is that all right? See, he, he already told you he's merciful. All right? Look at this. Visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Sounds just like the commandments. Hmm? Sounds just like the commandments, don't it? Verse 7. And the same one, look in the King James. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the what? Guilty. So you better stop sinning. You better stop practicing sin. You better stop living in sin. You better stop sinning. And I told you, many of you, you don't even know what sin is. Because all the what, sin, the, you know what's been taught to you is sin has been taught by Gentiles. Right. Who are not even people of a covenant. Come on, man. Preach. You don't even know what sin is. That's right, man. That's the truth. Yep. That's the truth. Uh-oh. He ain't going to clear the guilty. Visit the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and, four, and upon the children's children to the third and the fourth generations. Isn't that something? Still that coin now. Check this out. Verse 8. And Moshe made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshiped. He's in the presence of the king. In other words, he got finished telling Moses, Moses, let me tell you something. You tell my people, yeah, I am merciful. I will forgive them. But tell them they're going to pay for it too.
You hadn't been taught this, even in messianic movements, so-called Hebrew roots movements, so-called Israelite movements, so-called Christian movements. You ain't been taught right. You're going to get taught right here. That's why all these people come spy on our liberty, because they know the words here. They just ain't going to submit to it. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Fine with me. Save yourself. Bar McBar, 1418. Y'all do know what that is, right? Numbers, right? Look at this. It's patience and of great kindness. Y'all will forgive the crookedness and transgression and by no means leaving unpunished. Y'all hear that? You know, this is probably the best mess you probably ever heard in your life. Already. We, we could actually close our service right now. And be done and let you know that, you know what, especially you youth, don't, don't, don't go out there and, and, and think that you know something and you have the strength of youth. And think you can go out there and just sin. Yeah. Right. <coughs> it's going to visit you. It's going to find you out. My advice to you, you stay far away from it. And do not let sin be your ruin. Don't get heady and high-minded thinking you something when you nothing. You know how many people out there, you know, they, I was reading the statistics over, uh, the other day. It said over 110 million people in America have some form of venereal disease. 110 million people. There are only 330 million people in the country. A third of the people in this country have venereal disease. Well, if you were taught the Torah from your youth up, the Torah already told you. That there was going to be diseases that's going to end up coming upon you because you despise the commandment of Yah. Yeah. Your parents should have taught you that, but they didn't love you enough to because they were too busy living out the man of Gentiles. They're too busy living it up, doing their thing. They didn't love it. That's right. That's right. So how many times you want to go out and continue to keep playing Russian roulette, having sex before marriage? Then. Come on. Come on. Go out there, so-called sowing your wild Gentile oaks. I'm probably the best preacher this generation ever had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. I told you, when I get up and preach, mainly, I'm glad everybody here tuning in and stuff, but I'm preaching to the fathers. I'm preaching to the men. Because you don't want to get your houses in order. Oh, hallelujah. And all the rest of the sisters, y'all keep on enjoying and obey them that had a rule over you. That's pretty bad. That's a bad statistic. Y'all don't think that's a bad statistic? <laughs> Visiting the crookers of the fathers of the children of the third and fourth generation. All he's doing is echoing what he had said before. Jeremiah 30 verse 11. For I am with you. Look how he, he hasn't even changed. From Moshe to Jeremiah. I am with you, declare Yahweh, to save you. Yep. Hear that? Yep. He's with us to save us. Look at this. Though I make a complete end of all Gentiles where I have scattered you, yet I do not make a complete end of you. And that he did say he's going to destroy the Gentiles, right? That's what the word nations mean. When he's coming, he's going to destroy the Gentiles. That's why I keep telling you. you. I don't care what nation you come from. You cannot remain that nation. You have to become Israel. That means you have to make a covenant. That means you have to make a covenant. Of course, a covenant don't really mean nothing to Americans. We break them all over the place. You know what I mean? Our word ain't our bond no more. We say stuff, but we don't really mean it. I told you, I'm, I'm hooked up in this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm in this till death. Until death. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I ain't, I'm, I'm here. Why do you think a lot of people will uproot and move over here? Because they, they can see... Just by the, the way we preach and teach and live and the track record, these folk mean business. They are trustworthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm the one that need help. Come on. We're proving ourselves trustworthy. Yes, sir. Yes. What you can't trust is you. Come on. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. So true. Look at this. Yet I do not make a complete end of you, but I shall reprove you in judgment. Now wait, I wonder how you're going to do that. How's Yahweh going to personally reprove us in judgment? Come on. 
Well, let's go back to last week's message. Huh? He's going to have to use a man. He's going to use a man to preach and teach. Oh, hallelujah. Rebuke and reprove. You know them elders that feel Yahweh. Look at that. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. No wonder the instructor said, you need to know them labor monkey. The ones who watch. Because everybody ain't watching for your best interest. Most people make disciples of men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most people just want to make um, you their personal, their personal dream. Because they can't accomplish it without you. Mm-hmm. Look at this. But I shall reprove you in judgment and by no means leave you unpunished. See, our people had sense back then, after they went into captivity, they would say, how did we get here? I know where, I, I figured it out. We've been sinning all this time. All right, Father, I repent. I'm sorry. I even repent for my father's doing. Please get me out of here. Did he immediately remove them? No, he sat down and let them taste that bitterness for a while. You know the reason why? So you can teach your children. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Ain't y'all excited about your king? Hallelujah. I mean, I love stuff like this. Hallelujah. Now, we ain't removing conviction from it, I promise you. We're going to let the Holy Spirit bring a hammer. Because his word is like a hammer. Amen. And you have too many idols in your mind that need to be destroyed. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Pharisees could not stand the Messiah. They just couldn't stand him. Two messages. I'm going back a little bit here. I'll preach today. You need to learn this. Today there are two messages being preached today. One is authentic and is supported by both testaments as well as the testimony and experience of the saints through church history. And I'm not talking about Roman Catholic church history. I told you. While these men may be intelligent and they may mean something to somebody else, I, I put things in proper order and perspective. Sure. I, I truly don't give a damn about Tertullian, Marcion, Ignatius, Pope Gregory, or any of these boogers. A Martin Luther, I don't care nothing about them. They don't mean jack crap nothing to me. Amen. Now, I do esteem the words of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Amen. Moses. Amen. And as long as a man is speaking after that same spirit and after that same vein, I can listen to you. As soon as you start going off, I'll see you later. See you later. Does that make any sense? And that's the problem today. Is we know good Christian church history, but we don't know the prophets. The church fathers were not inspired by the father. They're inspired by philosophy. A counterfeit is a hybrid, a gospel, a mutation that has been created by ignoring scriptures and distorting the New Testament. A mixture of truth and error. See, some people have, you remember the Bible warns us about the spirit of error. It tells us clearly there's a spirit of truth and there's a spirit of error. Why do you think with all these people that so-called, so-called, I'm false, he preaching his wrong head, well, where you at? Anybody make a blanket statement like that? Now, since you have had the gumption to make a statement, now the burden of proof is on you to prove it then. Do you ever see anybody trying to come prove it? Nope. You know why? Because there's also an order in scripture that says that all miles may be stopped. They get mad because they they can't rebut it. I had a man tell me the other day through a brother said uh, his wife would listen to me preaching and got so mad went up there and, and, and grabbed a hope to the monitor and started shaking it half to death. Is that right? Went over and just grabbed the monitor. It heard me preaching. <laughs> I'm glad. At least she's still listening. See, y'all, y'all look at it the other way. I'm looking at the way Eddie. She's still listening. All them people that go on my YouTube videos vote. Bing. Hey, I take it the opposite way. Man, they're still listening. Could be hope for your wicked, unsanctified self. Good. Could be open. Stay tuned. 
Maybe your wretched, sorry soul can be saved. The true message calls us to a life of self-sacrifice and self-denial and set apart lifestyle, that's which Americans are not going to do. We'll pay attention to the message. It produces a change in behavior. You hear that? The true message. It is Yah-centered, always emphasizing obedience to Yahweh's will. It produces the fear of Yahweh. The other religious message is man-centered, putting wants and happiness of the person above the will of Yah. You know, seven steps to a better you. Yah wants you to prosper. Other religious message. It presents salvation as the means to a happy life and self-fulfillment and mostly as an escape from hell. Now that message tells you you're going to get escaped to hell and this preacher keeps telling you you're going to go to hell. So which one is going to be? Nobody wants to hear. Who wants to hear the message every time you come to a seminar? You're going to go to hell. Nobody wants to hear that. Yet the Messiah talked about hell. You need to go back and underline it sometime. Go back and read your Bible. Read, read the gospel and see how many times the Messiah talked about hell. Today it is not even talked about. They avoid it because they have to keep you comfortable. Mm-hmm. Other religious a message, it emphasizes Yah's love but rejects his judgment. Everything's all about love. Love, 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 love. It emphasizes the need to believe correct doctrine, but ignores the need to become a new creation in Christ. In other words, you can keep staying the way you are. No, you can't. If you could, I'll stay the way I was, and the Holy Spirit won't let me do that. It produces little or no transformation of the individual, leaving us no different in behavioral health than those in the world. Now, you won't believe how many times I wish I had this word preached to me as a youth up, brought up this way. I think about it often, how much trouble I could have saved myself from. Because that world, boy, when they give you stripes, boy, they permanent. They stick with you, kind of like scars on the body. You have a scar on the body, you can tell it where it come from. i tell you what I did this way, what happened over here, and what happened over there. Lasting memories. Faith and how it works. We have to be built up because so much has been taken from us and much has been destroyed by the Gentiles which have been ruling over us these many centuries. It's only in these last few years that we've actually been having the real truth unearthed and uncovered. We've been having successive truths throughout time revealed to us and stuff, but the acceleration of this truth because Yah is gathering his people. And I don't know, I keep telling you, you know, how many times did Jesus, not only did he say that John the Baptist was Elijah if you would have received him, but then the prophet says that the spirit of Elijah, one of the things it's going to do is going to restore, restore, restitution, restore, restitution. And the one thing that has to be restored is a right relationship between the fathers and the sons and the sons and the fathers. And these messages that people being preached, they, they ain't no relationship being restored. So it can't be the Elijah ministry then, can it? And they don't really truly believe it's the end times then. Huh? We had to get our hearts right back with the Father. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot involved in this restoration thing, which people despise and hate. Because yeah. when you say restoration, what you're doing is you're saying, we're also going back to the ancient faith of our Hebrew uh, ancestors, and we're, not, we're forsaking the Gentileism, and the Gentiles don't like that. Right. So they vote with defeat. Don't, don't you think people are intelligent, more intelligent than you think they are? That's why people harp on us about doing certain things. Where are we going back to the Wait a minute, we've been raised in sin, hell, and the devil. And you're going to fight over being holy and set apart? Don't worry about it. Everybody in America going to be in, in a tent city. I know you Americans don't think it's so, boy. Can, uh, go tell the people who had nice plus lifestyles. Now living in 10 cities. Come 
Look what your government do to you, though. When you get to you're filling up all the parks and stuff, they bring out fire hoses and they shoot you out of the, screen, the yeah. trees and stuff. Yep. Mow over your tents and stuff and kick you off of that. And then you have to go out into the wilderness. Yep. And then you get out in the wilderness, the game warden going to come and get you because you're on the land of the spotted owl. Enough to make a person start want to shoot folk, don't it? Uh oh, the powers that be, they hate this message. Because this type of words, words, are if I'm entering into the mountain, they make you think. Mm hmm. And the Gentiles have taught us very well how to function in their world. They have given us a form of godliness, Christianity. Which continually keep denying the power. The power of transformation. The power of the Holy Spirit ruling in our lives as well. We have more fear of the government than we do of Yah. And I think something's gravely wrong with that. And this message is to turn us children back to the heart of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Goyim thinking has produced a world of religion but no real faith. Have you been trained to be religious? Powerless? Yes, sir. Sure you have. Oh, yeah. Faith. The ability to see. Faith is the ability to see. Believe. That which you cannot see but you know it's there. Yes, Are you following me? Meeting Yahweh's conditions in order for faith to work. You have to meet Yah's conditions in order for faith to work. See like this other cat that came here to piss head. He came in with a condition and stuff, but he couldn't meet Yah's conditions. See, most people expect us to pull a name on them. I mean, a name on the Syrian, right? They want us to pull a name on them. No, we're going to sit down. We're going to find out exactly what's going on because, see, we realize we've been stripped of a lot of power throughout the centuries. And we're recovering a lot of things that has been lost. And I make it sense. Yes, sir. And so in that recovery and stuff, we got to really truly find out what kind of mess you, you've been into and what's going on with you. And just so we can order, hopefully let the Father have mercy on us, yeah. that we can get to the bottom line. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, I put so much emphasis on Sister Angela and, and her being healed uh, of that lupus and stuff. But then turn around and, man, LJ, at the same time, got healed of asthma. Isn't that something? Oh, they say asthma is an incurable disease. Yeah. Well, you need to tell Elder Austin that too because he hadn't had a breathing apparatus since he met me. Hallelujah. Now what do you do? Huh? Yeah. Now what do you do? Yeah. Well, the, the Hebrew Israelites can't tell you nothing like this, can they? They can quote you scriptures though. That's about all. That's about all. Because they ain't got the real true Ruah dwelling in them. Uh oh, we're going to learn a lot. Also, your Christian religions, too. You should be ashamed of yourself. There are some Christians out there that can do some healing, and you claim to be Israelites, and you can't do nothing. Y'all knows the hearts of all men. Yeah, he does. They may not be where you think they ought to be and stuff, but he apparently he knows something about their hearts that you don't know. Come on, come on. Oh, hallelujah. The only way your faith can be built up is by hearing the word of Yahweh. And at hearing, you have to hear the word preached. You have to hear the word preached, the proper word preached. Because we read all day long. And it still doesn't increase our faith to go out and become doers. You make sense? Oh, yeah. We're going to show both applications, okay? Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of Yah. If the preacher don't preach, you cannot believe. Amen. That's just a fact. The Most High Yah designed it that way. If the preacher don't preach, you can't believe. Do you understand? That's why I continue to keep telling you, y'all pray. That the Father continue to keep giving me utterance. Why? Because it's a benefit for you. Well, up to the level that you obey, though. Because, you know, even though we hear a lot, we still cherry pick the scriptures, though. 
Come on, brothers and sisters. We're lively stones, not tombstones, okay? Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not what? Seen. A lot of times when people get healed, you can't see the spirit or you can't see the condition that's there, but yet and still you know it's there. You can't see asthma, but it's real. When the people get healed, they know that they've been delivered and they're right. Somebody got to preach the message. Guess what, Israel? You can heal these diseases. You can heal these sicknesses. Hallelujah. What? Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Who else going to do it? The Goyams? Ain't been given to them. Hallelujah. Right. Preach. Are y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Why do you think that preachers and teachers don't teach this message? They'll dodge, they'll preach around everything. Everybody usually has one subject that they center on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Pentecostals, only the Holy Spirit. The Hebrew Israelites, we are Israel. That's it. Church of Christ, we don't play music in church. Baptists, we Baptists. We baptize. That's it. Every place you go, oh, prosperity, nothing but prosperity. I told you, you pay attention to the things that you don't hear preached. We pay so much attention to things we hear, we don't pay attention to things we don't hear. Amen. Including your brothers and sisters. When you hear them always talking about a lot of stuff, pay attention to things they ain't talking about. Because when you do that, that means you also have to pay attention to yourself. Amen. See that wisdom? Hallelujah. See that wisdom? Because, come on, we the most, we're blind to ourselves. Amen. Literally. Yeah, we are. We don't see ourselves. Come on. The most I didn't give the Holy Spirit so he can sit down and say, I got the Holy Spirit, I obtained it good, now I'm going to go to the kingdom while I'm sitting on my rear end. Right. Come on. Amen. That's right. He gave it to you so you can be doers. Yes, he wants you to be doers, Israel, yes, of his word and his truth, right? Yep. Check this out. For by it the elders obtain a good report. No, how they obtain a good report? By faith. And that faith is not mental sin. No. See, we've been in this country conditioned that faith is just something you personally believe up here in your head. But when you go read that whole chapter, every bit of that faith has to do with them doing something. That's how they showed that they believe. When they did something. They showed what they believed by what they did. And that was faith. Are you getting it? Verse 3. Through faith we obtain, uh, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are not seen were not made of things which do appear. Simply because y'all say it. Bam. And it was there. He didn't consult us either when he started making these things. Job knew that. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to y'all must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. Well look at this. He is a what? Rewarder of them that do what? Diligently. Not them, them that diligently. Them that now you have to ask yourself, do you do that? Because when we say we have faith, automatically our Gentile minds kicks in. Yeah, I believe. And that's all faith is to us. Isn't that right? Yep, mental sin. Nothing concrete, just mental sin. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now the question must be asked today. The assemblies, churches. Do they really truly believe enough to actually do the works of Christ? Do? See, this word is going to make manifest to everybody. Or do they just talk? Enough with words, it's time for real Holy Spirit action in the time we're living in. Are you hearing me? Another Jesus is another Messiah. You will represent the one who you serve. And you're going to represent the one who you serve based on what you've got up here. You have to understand, this mind is dangerous. It's very dangerous. This mind got you believing stuff that is fictitious. Same mind had you believing fairy tales. Make believe. Faith and works. Abraham was righteous because he was circumcised. You hear that? Is that true? No, earlier this week I did a, a statement in the dining hall and stuff. 
This is my trick question right here. Hmm? I'm going to go into something here in a minute to get y'all to understand. Brother John Reed, make sure you're paying attention before you get them Christians screwing you up. Come on. Come on. I'm going to get into something. Now, we know that the scripture says that Abraham believed Yah and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, look, at, look how I got this word up here. Abraham was righteous before he was circumcised. Is that true? Yes, sir. How? I just got finished quoting the scripture to you. Let's read it again. Abraham was righteous before he was circumcised. Was he? Was he righteous before he was circumcised? You think about it. Because this world today, man, we're going to have a circumcision line. We got to see if you're righteous. All men, before you come into this assembly, Elder Doug is going to have you to drop them. Hell no, he said, no, I ain't got no stop. He back there doing like this. I'm trying to set this thing up because I know I read it wrong the first time. But I'm trying to set this thing up, okay? But Abraham was uncircumcised. And yet he, was, he believed. So he was righteous before circumcision. Now, how does that fit us? You are uncircumcised in heart, and yet you believed. And it was counted to you for righteousness. And God gave you the Holy Spirit. Being yet uncircumcised. Oh, brother. That was just a revelation right there. I expected the brother to go, Oh, my God, just fall out in the back of the seat. I used to do stuff like that, maybe a theatric or something, but stuff like that would hit me. I'd go, oh, brother, did you hear that? I'd be disturbing service. How y'all compose yourself? Man. Let's go a little bit deeper here, okay? First John 3, 4, whosoever committed sin, transgressed the what? The law for sin is the what? Transgressing the law. We're going to get some understanding here, all right? Understanding. Faith, belief must come first. The law was added because of what? Transgress the brother St. King James Version. Go ahead and get Romans, the fourth chapter 9 through 16. Now watch this. Abraham left out of the land of the earth of the Chaldeans. Is that right? Yes, the land of Shem. Is that correct? Yes, All right. He journeyed on over here to the land of Canaan. Is that right? Yes, Is that right? Now watch this. Abraham, he ended up meeting Yah. Yes. He met Yah, right? Yes, yes, sir. And he moved with fear, not having his mom and daddy approval, not having his old... Right. But not only that, this man had so much influence that people believed him enough must have been something about him, that they moved with him. Must have been something about his character that people would move with him. Uh-oh. You think about it today. Uh, <clears throat> where are you going? Y'all spoke to me. He did. Spoke to do what? Well, he told me to go out and start a community. Oh, he did. You coming? Nope. Why? He didn't speak to me. Well, stay where you at. <laughs> Bye. Many moons later. Wow, look at here. They don't never say y'all spoke to you. Can we come in? No. You believe because you see? Boy, these dogs are hitting, ain't they? Come on, they should hit. You getting it? You getting it? A lot of people don't believe like you think they do. I'm telling you. Come on, yes, sir. I'm talking about when we first started this thing. Come on, brother Saint. Listen real close. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision. Now, also. we have a blessing that come from Abraham. Does it only come up on those who are circumcised or the ones that are uncircumcised? Notice he's coming from the position and place where he's at right now. Because you got a lot of people that want to capitalize on people whether they're circumcised or uncircumcised. All right, follow me? All right, so we're going to set this straight, okay? Read on. For we say. We say. That faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he, when he was in circumcision or now, wait a minute, wait uncircumcision? What, did faith come to Abraham when he was in circumcision? No. no. Abraham did nothing. 
He heard the voice. He obeyed. He moved. He moved. Action. This is an action faith, brothers and sisters. Read on. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Look at that. Abraham was uncircumcised, and yet he believed Yahweh. Uh oh. We got people today that are circumcised, and yet they, they, they say that their circumcision make them right, but yet they don't believe him. Come on, amen. Think about this. Read. And he received the sign of circumcision. No, circumcision was a sign to Abraham. Is that right? Amen. Read on. A seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised. Isn't that something? Amen. The circumcision was a sign of the seal that he had believed in the faith when he was uncircumcised. Amen. What is our seal today? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Now a lot of people don't want it. They don't want the Holy Spirit today. Especially that tongue talking Holy Spirit. They don't want him. So how much faith do they have then? Oh. oh. Because to receive the Holy Spirit, you got to do something. Just like Abraham had to move, you got to move. Oh yes sir, hallelujah. Look at him looking. Read on. <clears throat> that he might be the father of all them that believe. Notice. Just because of what Abraham did, he became the father of all them that believe. Yes, sir. What? Amen. By his faith. Yes, he started this thing when he believed. Yes, sir. And look how many people believe today because of Abraham's work. Amen. Read. <clears throat> Though they be not circumcised. Though they be not what? Circumcised. Circumcised. Read. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Isn't that something? Now, if we go physically, the only other nations that don't believe, as far as in the faith, are the uncircumcised are the ones who are the Gentile nations. Amen. Yet they believe. Right. There are people get filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're uncircumcised in the flesh. Now, what are we going to do about that then? The Father, the one who knows the hearts of all men. Even in the Torah, even in the Tanakh, he tells the people, you know what, I'm sick and tired of all your wicked sacrifices and stuff that you do. You want to try to just do something to meet conditions and stuff. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskins of your heart. Yes. Amen. Get that wicked heart circumcised Amen. and stop your sinning. Yep. Stop. Yes, sir. We're dealing with the same spirit today. People want to do the bare minimum that they can while they enjoy and live their little old life here. And then they want to go on into his kingdom with that attitude. And the father says, not so. You ain't coming in to file in my kingdom. Uh-oh. Read. And the father of circumcision to them who are not the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. You know the reason why? Because the father, Abraham became the father of many nations. Not just one nation. Many nations. Many nations. Bringing in the circumcised and the uncircumcised. The circumcision are the ones of the Hebrews. The Israelites. The uncircumcision are the Goyims. The Gentiles. And everyone that believes in the Father. Because of the faith of Abraham. They become circumcised. In heart. Read on. Which he had been yet uncircumcised. For the promise. That he should be heir of the world. Was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Through the righteousness of what? Faith. Meaning believe. See, we can say that Abraham believed y'all all day long, but yet if we don't read something to testify of his footprint, he didn't believe. He had to go do something. He had to literally move locations. He had to go against, what, 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 man, what, what, Abraham, what, what are you doing, man? Well, I, I got a voice speaking to Abraham going crazy. He got a voice speaking, man, can't you see? Look at all these gods we got right here. Look at them. They sitting right here in front of us. Them ain't no gods. What? You speaking against the religion of your family. Do you know our traditions? Come on. Yeah, them ain't number of pieces of wood. A blaspheming. Come on. There ain't no life in them things. Look at them. Click. Abraham don't go start raving mad. He's cutting the head off of the statues. Hallelujah. 
I'll tell you what, son, you ain't got to worry about it. Just go and get out. Because we ain't putting up with this attitude of you changing everything around here, especially beating up on our gods. <laughs> you know how much them things cost? We pay good money for them things. <laughs> Abraham had to go. And you know what? People believed him when he started talking. Think about that. Is that, a, is that, is that really God? That piece of wood? Come on. Some people go, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. See where we're at today? Now we're on the other side of this. And people still can't believe. And they claim in faith Abraham. Friends, read. For if they which are of the law be heirs. Now, wait a minute. If they of the law be heirs. You know, people who are born, natural born Israelites. Right. And beside that, you know, when you're dealing with natural born Israelites, you're saying, wait a minute, you're dealing with many nations. Read on. Faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. You mean to tell me if any, anybody else believes and we only just stick with our one line, only the Israelites can be saved and stuff like that, nobody else can be saved, that faith is void? Come on. It's flat out void. Read on. Because the law worketh wrath. The law worketh what? Wrath. Why you think we had to get it? Because we were sinning so much. Yeah, that's right. Preach. Sin is a transgression of what? Law. Yeah. We needed the law because we were lawless. Right. And the law was there to correct our behavior. Right. I said the law was there to correct our behavior. Right. Read on. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Come on. Therefore it is of faith... That it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Not only the ones who are natural born, but, or, or the bloodline or seed, but those who actually believe. Believe enough to believe Abraham and the faith that he followed and walked in. The same vein. So don't give me this mess that only natural born Israelites can be saved. I want to hear that crap. Huh? The father dealing with the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And when you read in the new renewed covenant, circumcision and uncircumcision, it's talking about those who are of the faith of, of Abraham, meaning the natural Israelites, and then those who are Gentiles. And they both have to believe. You can cut your flesh all day long, you still got to believe. And let me show you what this belief is today. Repent and be baptized. Yep. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they don't want him today. So much for faith. Read on. Oh, that's it. Watch this now. Galatians 3, 5. He therefore that ministered you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you. Watch this. Have you ever said, I ministered by the Spirit, right? No, I'm sure over the years y'all see me do many miracles. Is that right? Yes, now, you know it's the Father that's doing it in me, right? Yeah. You know, I, I do know that. I just got to bring clarity because scribe one, Pharisee two. Yes, you understand what I mean? Yes, yes, Same way you do it. How you think you're able to do it? Because you saw this big eye preacher doing it. Yes, hey, he can do it. I can do it too. But you had to hear it. You read about it all day long. Yes, Didn't make you do nothing. Then it's big, give you a lick of inspiration to do it. You read, I would say, you see him do it. Hey, look at that. Let me try this. Come out. What? Be healed. What? Wow. Hey. That's why faith comes out here. When Jesus told the disciples, you go out and preach this gospel and stuff, you teach them all things, whatsoever I commanded, what I was told, I observe, told, I observe you to command. I command you to observe. You do it. You do it. They was going out and they was going to teach the same thing that the Messiah taught them. And ever since then, since the Romans sacked us and stuff, and we've been in captivity, they removed all those teachings from us. That's why we are faithless and perverse generation. Are y'all listening to me, Israel? The Messiah even told us we was a faithless and perverse generation. We're faithless and perverse because we got a bunch of lip service, but we don't do nothing. To confirm the faith that we're in. Right. So he that he that ministered therefore to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, do he do it by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? 
I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit without keeping one law. Didn't know how. <laughs> Check that revelation out. Didn't know how to live and keep the law. I repented. Got filled with his Holy Spirit, man. Because if I had to keep the law in order to be saved, I'd be dead. How can I keep a law that I'm not even familiar with? I grew up a Christian. The Ten Commandments to me was John 3, 16. For God to love the world, and he gave the only begotten Son. Who shall believe in him? Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That was the Ten Commandments. How can I keep the law? Whew. Boy, it was a good thing the Father saw that hard, didn't he? What? He gave the Holy Spirit to them that obey him. No wonder. Now, some of you people, I'm telling you, you got a familiar spirit. You ain't got the Holy Spirit. Don't you think that everybody speaking in tongues has got the Holy Spirit because there's such thing as false tongues. And that's why the king kept saying over and over and over again, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruit. Let them speak in the tongues a thousand times, a thousand ways over. But by their fruits, you shall know them. Are y'all getting this? By their fruits, you shall not hook a Messiah, speak in tongues a thousand times, all the way you want. <laughs> Uh oh, got mother over there. Look, she know that's an old apostolic, Sammy. <laughs> but I know that there's false tongues. Come on. I've actually had people come to our services, and all the saints would literally go off because they sit up there and see somebody believe they received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And they're all happy. Hey, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I come on, spoil the party. They ain't got it. What? Did you see that? They ain't it. What? Y'all ain't never seen me do something like that, saying, old timers. Yes, sir. I said, but no, I ain't got the Holy Spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. They're like, then they get finished. Yeah, I do got it too. I said, we'll see. And I walk off. And guess what? We saw. <laughs> they ain't have it. Now that's a pretty bold move. You got somebody up there grandstanding like they got the Holy Spirit and everybody else thinking they got it. You walk up and spoil the party and say, they ain't it. You ain't got the Holy Spirit. That's a false spirit. That's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. That is bold. And guess what? I was right. Do you think I want to go up there and tell somebody that because I don't want them to have it? No, I'll tell them because I want them to have the genuine Holy Spirit. The real Holy Ghost. The real one. You don't tell them that because you want to be, you know, you mess people up and make their heart fall out. You love them enough to tell them the truth. And that's a false spirit. All right, no, then I got the, okay. I'm going to sit and argue with you, but we'll see. You know, the time will fail me to tell you all these things that have been going on over the years. All these things are going on over the years. But anyway, we do about a hearing of faith. Everything we believe, we do about it here in the faith. Because somebody else believed, and we are able to believe because they believed. <clears throat> faith is a lot more than mental assent. This is what Christians call faith, but it's not Hebrew. Mental assent is not concrete. Do you understand that? Just because you sit and go, I believe, I agree. That don't mean you believe. That's just you acknowledging the truth. But that don't mean you really truly believe. Your belief is best demonstrated by your life and what people can see. Ah, oh, we're going to go on with this now. Galatians 3, 6. Even as Abraham believed Yah, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of what? Abraham. Look at this. And the scriptures foreseeing that Yah would justify the... They can't be Israelites. Now, there are Israelites that are heathen because they've been in captivity like us, acting like a bunch of banshees. Through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. You mean telling the gospel was preached even way back then? So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faith for Abraham. 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For he that come a preaching another Jesus. That's what, we've been, that's what we've been hearing all our lives. You don't believe me? Remember the Jesus of Christianity and then look at the Jesus that we preach over here in the Hebrews. You don't see the difference? 
They both sound like two different characters. Mm -hmm. That's what the Romans did. Can't beat them, join them. Where did he get that from? Satan. Every time I turn around and kill some of these folks, 100 more rise up. So I just jack their religion, put our philosophy into it. After a few centuries, rose up, raise up Roman Catholic Church, make them all worship the Pope, we got them. Done deal. The vicar of Christ. Hey, but there's people, they got a Protestant Reformation, ain't no big deal. They still going to obey the laws of the church. They're still ours. Whomsoever you yield your member service to obey, that's who servants you are. Ah. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, went too fast now. He to come preach another Jesus whom we are not preaching. If you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Those who produce little or nothing will always be the greatest judges against those of the faith. Y'all hear me? Those people who are religious that produce little or nothing are the ones who sit back in the judgment seat. And, and they cherry pick and judge everybody who demonstrates real true faith. That's what the scribes and Pharisees did. Huh? They hated him. They couldn't stand him. And some people are of the seed of these people. How do you know? The attitude of the day is the same religious attitude that we're faced with today. They hated him. <laughs> I keep going back to it. They couldn't stand him. Huh? Look what Jesus said in John eleven forty five. 45. And many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did believed on him. Wait a minute. They heard. Is that what it said? Yep. Or did it say they seen? It said they seen the things that Jesus did. Amen. They seen. The things that Jesus did. Amen. And they Amen. believed on him. Amen. They sing. They, they sing. Yes, yes. They sing. Yes, Amen. I remember in Greenville, South Carolina, some years ago, this woman come, come it was considerably, it was considerably, you could see it too. This I, I told this woman I commanded her leg to grow out and people start running out the door. In in the day back then, people would have saw that and go, I believe. Let me try this again. Let me, let me, let me go back again. I'm going to put you in remembrance, okay? Yahweh knew that he just couldn't send Moses with a word alone. Amen. 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 Because your word ain't no better than my word. Amen. So I'm going to give you some signs. To solidify. To substantiate. To back you up. To let them know that I have sent you. Y'all yes, yes, get it? Yes, sir. If the people did not see that, they wouldn't believe Moses. Right. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. Amen. Look at us today. We believe people just because they say a word. Yes, sir. How many times you've been in places running all over the earth listening to somebody just for a word? Just so yo, you can feel your inside go, ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, we got a word. Woo, woo, woo. What the? Oh, ooh. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Hold on. Let me do this. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to come down a little bit out of this spirit coming to this earth because y'all are way off bases, bro. I'm trying to understand and believe the way y'all believe in. I, because I'm having a rough time. I'm in the spirit right here. You going to waste all your gas money, bill money, going to hear some preacher preach. Boy, show they get a word. And many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did, seen these things which Jesus did, believed on him. Here I am, in the name of Jesus, healing a woman's leg and people take off running. You don't think that religion has got us jacked up? But damn it, you can sit in front of a damn TV and soak yourself in front of a tarot card commercial. 
or a palm reading commercial and it don't phase you one bit. You can see a witch walking in the store and it don't bother you. Did I just say something wrong? No, I'm just trying to tell you. See why mine is? Yes. See how they got us? They jacked us up. We're far removed. Amen. Yeah, right. Used to believe in the day. You see, the Greek, the 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 the, 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 the Yehudim seeketh out the sign. The Greeks wisdom. So our people, our nation, they always believed in righteous signs. Now there are lying signs and wonders. But the sign usually represents the one who is mimicking. But some of them went their way to the Pharisee. When they saw what Jesus did, they went back to their churches. <laughs> they went back to their preachers. You seeing this? Went to the Pharisee and told them what things Jesus had done. You know why? Some of them go and say, hey, man, you know what? Hey, preacher, we went over here and saw this Jesus. You should have seen what he did. But he, they were going back to the wrong people. They were going back to the scribes and Pharisees. Right. Are you following me? See, the people are going under the unction. Man, you got to go check this out. This guy is healing, doing miracles and everything. But these scribes and Pharisees, they're looking with these wicked eyes. They're listening to you. And they're coming with an attitude. That's why you see a lot of conflict with the scribes and Pharisees against Jesus. Because the people were believing on him. And they had to do something to recover their place. This thing developing? Look, and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and counseled and said, What do we? I'll tell you what you do. Read books. With little hands at point. Little fingers at point. Hmm? You, that is what you do. I'm going to say exactly what they do today. This is what religious people do today. All right? Don't I look religious? <laughs> then when they get finished with that, then they go do this. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Then they walk around in front of you. They go, Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi. And, and then you go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, look, that's Rabbi right there. Look, ooh, 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 ooh. so anytime somebody put on one of these white and blue prayer shawls, you call them spiritual because you dumb as hell. Somebody say Torah, you finish. We're going to get up here today, today, and we're going to read you the Torah portion. Um, 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 <laughs> and you people call these people the people of a book you damn liars you deceive us ain't not telling the truth over oh, pecking on the wall of a Roman fortress They couldn't do nothing. So they said, look at this. What do we? For this man doeth miracles. Talking about the Messiah. 
Did not Jesus say the works that I do, ye shall do, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father? Yes, sir. Go on YouTube and see how many preachers you're going to see talking about this. And doing it. So we, could have, we could actually do more if we didn't have so much unbelief amongst us. Unbelief short changes everything. And look what, look what their philosophy was. If we let him thus alone, in other words, if we just let him be, all men will believe on him. Yep. Y'all hear that? Look, and the Romans, and the who? Romans. Americans. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And they still did it anyway. You can't believe the word of a Roman. <laughs> you can't believe a word of a Roman. You cannot trust the word of a Roman. The only way you can believe a Roman is if he's a converted over to Israelite. Did they still not take away their place? Yes or no? Did they still not take away their nation? Yes or no? If you don't remember, they sacked the temple in 70 AD. But look at their philosophy. If we leave this Jesus alone, the Romans are going to come and take away both our place and nation. And then what's going to happen to us? We're going to be in exile. So guess what we got to do? We got to set up people that are going to be false witnesses against him. We got to set up people who are going to accept bribes against him. Now, we ain't doing no miracles, but we're going to do whatever we can to shortchange and stop him from doing it. Because if, if he can't, see, it, look, look, he's doing these miracles and he's deceiving the people. You ever heard that before? Well, what are you doing if you ain't doing no miracles? Come on, look at that. Well, we don't want to put too much emphasis on miracles. But what if you don't do it at all? You ain't putting no emphasis on nothing. Come on, amen. You're on a false balance. Look at this. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of Yah that were scattered abroad. Skipping on down 11 to them. Huh? He's going to gather into one. Look at this. And from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. See, today we don't kill people, so we get together and we take counsel of how we're going to destroy people by getting them offended from trusting in those who they should believe. Because we can't gather nothing, so what we do is we weave our way into the congregation. And then we start spitting in the people's ears lies and falsehoods from our own personal doctrines and belief. And we cause the, the people that are weak-minded to be offended. And then we cause them to go away. That's what's happening today. And they took counsel together or to put him to death. Now, why would you want to put to death a man? Now, Jesus, none of us, Jesus. But this is the righteous, most holy man. Living. And even way back then, he had enemies against him wanting to kill him. Because they were worried about their place and their nation. Well, guess what? They nation sure has come back in full force today, ain't they? They're the international bankers. They got the whole world believing that these Jews of today are Yah's chosen people. The most wicked and immoral people that there ever has been on the face of planet Earth. Lying, cheating, stealing, deceiving, killing, murdering, all for profits. Wars. The same people that's even got this nation in hock to it. To the point now, we get to the point we can't even pay the interest on our national debt because we're so indebted to them. Modern day Jews. Uh oh. They hated him. I want y'all to pay attention to the walk on Messiah. Are y'all listening? Y'all going to sleep? Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews. That was way back then. Y'all see the reason why I don't go out and preach on street corners? For what? Well, he said, go out in all the world. We done done that. Gospel everywhere. 
It's everywhere. The gospel is going to reach the four corners of the earth. Now what do we do? I'm going to do what Jesus did. He went no more among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a place called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. I'm going amongst the people. I, I'm, I'm going where Israel is. And I'm trying to pull as many Israelites out of Christianity as I can. What's our mission? Our mission is to go get our people, those who can hear, out of false religions. Be it Hebrew Israelite, be it Messianic Judaism, be it Messianic, be it Christianity, be it Islam, no matter what it is, get them out. How are you going to know them? By their fruit. How else are you going to know them? He'd have ears to hear. Let them hear. What do y'all think I do when I go out? Y'all remember a few years ago, I was, man, it seemed like every time he turned around, passed out, shoo, California, passed out, woo, North Carolina, passed out, woo, Texas, passed out, woo. See me flying all over the place, going all over the place. Huh? I'd have some people come there, I'd have 70, 80, 90 people show up to these meetings. Knowing good and well that only about four or five out of all of them is, is, is the chosen Israel. I know that. They don't know that. Remember when I went to Florida and saw you for the first time? How old was you? 17 then? 18? How old are you now? Boy, you grown, ain't you? <laughs> 18 year old young man come down there to hear this big eyed preacher preaching, still in the faith. Not all the people show up. Ain't many still in it. Not many still in it. Did you know about me then, Mama? A little bit. Probably called me every name on the book, didn't you? Yep, see? You ain't the only one. There's a bunch of them guilty in here. <laughs> Talked about me like a dog. Understand this. And let these sayings sink deep into your hearts, Israel. Matthew 10, 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his master. In the scriptures, the taught ones is not above the teacher, nor the servant above his master. It is not enough for the disciple that he should be as his master and the servant as his Lord. For if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear and fear not them which are which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. That's what real fear is. If you are finding it hard to believe us, this is what the Messiah said, then believe like the Messiah said, for the very work's sake. We getting better? Can y'all tell we getting better playing music? Hmm? We, we ain't no rock stars, but we getting better. Y'all can tell it, right? Because we got a whole brand new crew up here. All of us put together, we, we got a combined experience of four months. I mean, if you got people been playing a while and you got all these brand new folks in here that's three months playing in here, man, that drops through all those averages now. And we, we're making a joyful noise. Isn't that true? Huh? Now we can play well on an instrument, but they ain't gonna do the work. Let me let me get to the point that I'm making here today. You got a lot of people that have a whole lot of mouth. But you have very few people that can actually do what Jesus said. And even at that, we're still lacking greatly today. Because we're so far behind from where we should be. And so we are doing, we're going, actually going against wind and tide to unearth all the faith that has been covered up. Because so much, we, we have learned how to be religious. We can tell you how to be religious. We can tell you how to be religious. We can get up here and play the same tune for 50 minutes. And you think you're in the spirit and you are in the spirit. When you come down, when you get finished with that, what about living and working this thing out? 
which we don't find too much of. When I was in apostolic church, the church consists of going, hear the word, preach and teach, dance until you got sweat falling down to your socks. Then eat. That's it. Do it again next week. Watch people get in every year, watch them get worse and worse. The very opposite happened with us. Don't get me wrong. You ain't going to be healed to the point forever. You ain't going to die. You're going to die. Amen. Die. Amen. Amen. Meanwhile, you don't even want to stay here anyway. We had our people the way our people used to believe. They want to get out of here and we want to stay here. That's what the enemies will say. You better watch it. Come the purple Kool-Aid dry and drop right here now. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> These folks out of their mind, bro. Huh? Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me was believing for the very work's sake. Very, very, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Since Jesus has gone to the Father, we know that's a fact. What has happened that we got to the point that we've been relegated to just a foot stomp and a hand clap? To where we go to church and receive philosophy. They've taken it from us. Religion has stripped the faith of Abraham from us. We done got so much. Now, we done left out the foot stomp and hand clap. Now is where we got teat seats or not. Do we have a prayer shawl? Do you have a beard down to your knees? Do you have repelling ropes down to your shoulders? That's a logo? <laughs> you pagan. <laughs> Didn't mean to give you no shower, brother. That's all right. <laughs> now everything is fleshly. Right. Amen. Nothing spiritual. Right. See, I, I, we have to really kick this back into high gear again so we can get the, the power to really work it again. Because it was just no more than a few short years ago, man, we were really getting after it hard and heavy. Now, I know what's going on. I know the Father had to get us into some real sign. He got to get our minds right. So when we go forward, we go forward with even greater power and strength. I don't understand that. But he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But y'all see what's going to happen today? They don't put us down to externals. Nobody's paying attention to the power that confirms that the real true Messiah and his spirit lives in you. We're a mess. A literal mess. But he said, you're going to do these because I go to the Father. And whosoever and whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Now we got a lot of people arguing over names. I seen one video some time ago of these Israelites out there calling themselves battling demons. And there was this one faggot out there. There was a he she. And then that thing will wear them out. And I go, now wait a minute. They call this battling demon. Look like demon whooping their rear end. I said, I wish that twisted, warped, distorted, faggot, fiend, whether it, it pop, will pop up in front of me like that on them streets. You know the only thing they had? Two won't bow down. Two won't bow down. Two won't bow down. And that demon mocking them the whole time. Totally powerless. Powerless. Demon was mocking them. I said, you ain't battling no demon. That demon whooping the fire. I'll make y'all look like a fool. I kid you not. I think it's probably still, they probably, they, they got it up privately up there. We battling demons. No, y'all getting your ass whooped by demons. Because all your studying, all your word knowledge, all your retainability is not working. It ain't going to work with these kinds of spirits. We're in a wicked and perverse generation. And the only way these things are coming out is by fasting and prayer. You ain't going to sit up there and study six hours a day 
And then turn around and go out on the streets and call yourself preaching and stuff. And then when you meet up with Satan out here and all of a sudden he's mocking you and making you look like a fool. Y'all see it. Sometimes, sometimes Satan does try me out there when we get out there. He'll bring some bold, something like up there, and they'll start cutting the fool. Act like, oh, really? Oh, really? You want to oh, you want to dance, huh? Okay, good. Let's get after it. Pew! Take on run every time. You lying devil. See, because we've been so centered and attention, I put all our attention and focus on human beings. That we never look at anything spiritual. It's the, oh, they just got problems. Look at them. They have issues. Look at see how we dress it up? We never deal with anything demonic. Yet in Christ's days, they knew it was demonic. That's right. Amen. Amazing, huh? Diseases are demonic. Come on. Yeah, that's what the New Testament says. Everything we deal with today that you cannot make sense of with your own natural reasoning is, is demonic. We have depression on unprecedented levels in this country. And the only solution, there's two solutions to it. Praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yep. Depression is the spirit of heaviness. Yep. It's a spirit. Yep. Now you got to judge by the fruit of it. Is it a godly spirit or is it a satanic spirit? Ah, right. uh, we got a solution. We're going to take some pills. What? To manage? To soothe the devil? They're not telling the truth. And today we have the spirit of error working all over the place that the people confuse. They don't even know the spirit of truth today. Because so much spirit of error. The man had a dumb and deaf spirit. In that case, America's inundated. He had a dumb and deaf spirit. He didn't have issues. He didn't have troubles. He didn't have problems. He had a dumb and deaf spirit. He had a demon. Y'all hear this? The spirit of whoredoms. Is that a good spirit or bad spirit? America's finished. It's untook over. A perverse Spirit. Homosexuality is a perverse spirit. Hey, but the law of the United States of America says, guess what? It's the law. You go on all day long with these spirits. And we don't think like that today. Everything with us, cardinal, fleshly. Our answer and solution is shoot them up with some drug or give them a pill. Amazing, isn't it? See how our minds are gone? Literally gone. Sister Chester, don't you work in the hospital? I bet you see spirits all day long, don't you? Huh? No, sometimes you look over and go, oh, Jesus, look at that. That's a devil right there. Huh? Drug them for it, too. Got to manage the devil. We don't even see spiritually no more today. Whatever you shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So a lot of these people with all these names, apparently they don't know them then. Especially they can't do the works. Religion can't produce the power of God. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He's reiterating it. Somebody either know it or they don't. And it can't be because you take your tongue and your lips and you form words. This has to be something in the spirit. And Jesus came in unto them, saying, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way even unto the end of the world. The problem is, is that this Messiah hasn't been taught. It's been the other Messiah. This one hadn't been taught. Now we're teaching this Messiah. Mark 16, 14. He appeared unto the eleven and said at me. 
and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Now you see the reason why I come down on us, on us so hard? I do. I come down on us hard. Man, we look holy. But man, we got a lot of unbelief still among us. Too much to be the people of the faith. We have too much unbelief amongst us as the people of the faith. We're too arrogant. We're too heady. We're too high-minded. We think we know everything. Yeah, we do. Because they believe not on them which have seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, there we go again, even the side talking about signs again. He gave Moshe a sign, he's still talking about that again. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out what? Devils. So with today's a lot of these assemblies, in my name they shall leave them in. Because they ain't casting out nothing. In my name, they're going to leave them in because they ain't casting out nothing. That's the philosophy of the day. They come up with good sayings like, Christians can't have no devils. No, you don't have a devil. You got a whole slew of them. You flatter yourself to think you only have one devil. And they shall speak with new tongues. Well, we forget that then. Holy Spirit has been kicked out of all these religious assemblies. They shall take up certain. If they drink any daily things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. James 2.14, what do it profit, my brother? And do a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith say him? We have so much faith in this country just by mental sin because we say we believe and still ain't saved. If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warm and be filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what do it profit? You know, we got people that have means. And they know that their brother and sister are struggling. They're not going to offer anything. Not even so much as even lift out a hand. But they say they have faith. That's what James is saying, but these people ain't going to work. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that are irresponsible. They do, they do need to be taught a lesson. And so there needs to be some disciplines if you was to give charity out to them and to help curve their, their um, um, form of false lust. But there are some people that are genuinely in need that need help. And we can see it. We won't even do it. Man, we got, a, we got the type of faith today that even when saints come into the area, we're supposed to house them, man. We don't even want them to stay in our house. I couldn't even fill up this church right here with all the people that's ever slept in our house. I couldn't fill up this building. And this is a big building. With all the people that, that actually just stayed in my house and my house alone. I, I got to use some example. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead. That's the reason why we're in the condition we're in today because we're in dead religious faith. A lot of people are. They don't have no works, so therefore it's dead, being alone. Amen. And yea, if a man say he has faith, thou hast faith, and I have works, show me thy faith without thy works. That's why I ask unbelievers all the time. They claim to believe, I want to see your faith. You ain't got no works, I want to see it. And I will show you thy faith by my works. Now the works is the works of the Messiah. Is that true? Thou believest that there's one Yah, you do as well. The devils also believe and tremble. So what does that mean just because you believe that there's one Yah? That don't make you nothing big because you monotheistic. But what without no old vain man? Faith without works is dead. Y'all know how the devil is really beating up on y'all to even try to keep y'all mind on this? That's what happens when you start getting into these believing messages. The devil starts attacking that body. I could tell a joke or say something foolish. All of a sudden you're quickened and made alive. I constantly deal with, I want y'all to pay attention to this part, okay? I want y'all to pay attention to this part, okay? I constantly deal with people who hear about the ministry and the power that comes from it. They come, number one, with the attitude to come and spy on our liberty. Notice I said first thing they do is hear. Because there are all different types of people that come. I'm getting to a particular type of people, mostly ministers. 
They see if they can purchase the gift of Yah. Mm -hmm. Now they don't come with physical money. What they want to do is try to pick you for all the truth you know so they can come up with some combination to figure out how to do this without meeting y'all's conditions. Because remember, buy the truth and what? Sell it not. They have their own personal agenda. You know, y'all has called them, but they have to come here to learn how to do what y'all called them to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't doubt that y'all's calling. You have to be under tutors and governors, but see what they want to do is they want to maintain what they believe, but they want to come over here and learn, but they don't want to sit at the feet and really learn because then we would have to come part of you. See, how can a father build his house when everybody got these own inflated ideals? All the places that I no longer fellowship with is because they did not want to continue in the works of Christ. Are y'all following me? Yes, sir. First place I left Apostolic Church because they was too busy being greedy, giving a giving the bishop thirty and forty thousand dollars offerings every year for pastor appreciation, while you got people sitting in the congregation struggling to make ends meet. And I told him, I said, "Man, I just got finished reading this book of Acts. Maybe we ought to get a community started." You know what he told me? You just want somebody to take care of you. I go, "Dang, where'd that come from?" That was the end of that. Next place I left, a little bit of immorality, but not only that, they refused to have the power of God to work. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit having his way when he comes in. I believe in the power of Yah, casting out devils and stuff. And so many religious people departed from me. So the Father forced me into exile. Y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Amazing, huh? I'm telling the truth. So these people, when they come, they have their own personal agenda. They have a religion, a philosophy, a belief, wherever it comes from. They recognize that the power and the influence of y'all is here. They want to learn what they can, but they still want to go on in their agenda. Now, I don't mind. Go do it if it's going to work, but I ain't never seen it work. Well, here go the spirit. Yeah, you just want everybody to listen to you. I wish I could sit down and shut up. Now figure that one out. Come on. I wish I my greatest my greatest ambition is to never be needed. I had so much fun sitting right on that front view. I, I miss it so much. Sitting right there. I told you what I used to do. I was walk in the assembly. I'd come to church, boy, oh, hallelujah. I mean, I was brother down. Man, I'd be so happy. Simply getting ready to get started right there. I come, hey, how y'all doing? It was tight like kids. Hey, 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 hey. They get frustrated, get mad, man, and some of them just going back. And, Bye, brother. I had my play down just like this. <laughs> couldn't nobody out praise me? They couldn't do it. Why? It wasn't about them. It was about me and him. It was personal between me and him. And I wasn't going to miss nothing. Look at <laughs> That's how I come in assembly. If it was really, really tight, I'd have a little mercy and then go back and get the second row. I wasn't going too far back now. I ain't going too far back. This is not to say that everyone that comes be, um, because it is biblical for a man to come and see. But these people, they have a personal agenda. In other words, we're not going to submit to you. But we want everything that you got. Now what do we do? Because all these places that I come from, I didn't learn none of this what I'm teaching today. Uh-oh. And you know what? I hope another five, five more years from now, be the fathers we're that we're greater and father alone. We've always been growing ever since. We've been going in grace and knowledge every year. There's never been a year that we have never grown. We're going to be far along too. Oh, yes, sir. You know why? Because I diligently seek him. You know why? He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
And I want everybody that, it, whatever you can learn from me, learn it, then go do it. Truth. Hallelujah. Paul said in Galatians 2, 1, then 14 years after I went up uh, again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privily to them which were of reputation, people who esteemed, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be what? Circumcised. If Titus was to come here today, there'll be a lot of come say, brother, you can't come here because you're a Greek. You can't come in this assembly, you're a Greek. But yet and still, Paul had fellowship with him. Called him a son, too. See how this racism spirit flying under the radar of perception? You see it? They'll tell him, you can't fellowship with us because you're Greek. I've had people tell me, well, what kind of Israelite with you with all them white folks in the congregation? I go, what kind of Israelite with you with none in it? How can you get all nations out of one nation? Hey! I do the revelations, you didn't get it. How can you do it? It flabbergasts these people. The Messianics, they are upset because all they got is white folks. The Israelites all upset because all they got is black folks. They come here and they see everybody, all these different ethnic backgrounds and nations, and we're few in number. And they don't know what to do. <laughs> How did he do that? There ain't nothing I'm doing. Just preach the word. But you can't because you preach religion and philosophy. Here's Titus, I ain't even being compelled to be circumcised. And yet people are, hey man, brother, you circumcised? Brother, you circumcised, brother? No, no, we, 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 you can't come in here. Well, I'll tell you what, bro, you can come on in here. Wicked devils. See, they need a heart circumcised. They capitalize on the flesh, ain't got nothing spiritual. But that because a false brother unawares bought in, look, who came in privily to spy out our liberty. Y'all think that stopped? That false brother needs still today to come in and spy on our liberty. That stuff ain't stopped. Look, which we have in Christ, that they might bring us into bondage. Get the funny bread out of the well. What's the doctrine, brother? Well, we all elders. Here, we all brothers. What? They go out there and bite off all these other trees of these people who ain't got a drop of the Holy Spirit. It's amazing how these spirits link up, in it? They link up. People who ain't got the spirit, religious, they hook up with these other religious folks. Then they try to come preach our philosophy and doctrine. Then they end up taking away all the, all the other people. They, what they end up doing is removing the dross. Got to get rid of the bad apples. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's good, isn't it? To whom we gave no place... But uh, by subjection, no, not for an hour. See, what happens is, a lot of times these deceived men, they don't know that I know them when I see them. Because they think that I'm functioning just like them. And they will never even know what I know when I'm standing in front of them. I'm sitting up there listening to them, watching them. I'm permitting them. But I'm not giving them no place. Only, just, just give it a little bit of time. The pride start rising up. Because they ain't getting place. Because they think they ought to deserve, they deserve place. Right. Yes, They'll show out in a little while. Yeah, yeah they will. Yeah. Not for an hour. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Re reading from the scriptures. And these we did, we did not yield in subjection even not for an hour. So that the truth of the good news remains with you. <clears throat> See, I have to pre prevent a lot of these people who think that they're somewhat or something. Just so the truth of the gospel it stays with you. The trouble is, is when you get down and start entertaining them and start having all these little personal uh, Bible studies at 12 or 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on. Man. Oh, man, we hit them scriptures, man. You did? Well, let's see what kind of fruit come of it. I just had to put a brother out of an assembly in Kansas. I'm way over here in Lafayette, Tennessee, and I had to put somebody out in Lafayette, in Kansas. Well, how'd you do that? Because I told the head of the assembly, get him out. What? Get him out. Oh, yes, sir. 
I'm going to help save you a lot of heartache real quick. Get them out. And when I come to Kansas, tell them to show up then. And make sure you're listening. I'll be in Kansas hopefully within a month. Then you can come and preach your false doctrine when I get there. Until then, you stay your ass away from the Israelites. Y'all hear that? We'll see what happened then. That's, right. yeah. That's how you deal with them. You got to deal with these devils like I'm telling you. You know what it's about again? I want to step in and try to, here it is again, man. A spirit want to rise and try to fight against one of, my, one, of, one of the brethren at the head of the assembly because he thinks that they all should be elders. You sound shut up! See, we got to get rid of these devils so they don't infect everybody else. You have all the time in the world to tell me your false doctrine when I get out to Kansas. And I am coming. I promise you that. Agenda. These are the type of men who come wanting you, so-called, learn from me so that they can go on and do, look at his word, their ministry, separate from me, their teacher. You know, because all those young men, Paul wasn't going to be around forever. He had to teach people. I mean, I have many home assemblies. I don't rule over them. They have assembly heads. I deal with the assembly heads. They need something. I try to provide them wisdom, knowledge as needed. So, but I ain't got time to manage all that. I ain't, there ain't enough for me to go around. I ain't trying to lord over Yahweh's heritage. Does this make any sense? Yes, sir. Any sense whatsoever at all? I ain't trying to lord over them. They're learning as they go. Oh, hallelujah. This is not Yahweh's way. So I give space to them for a little while. Then I cut off occasion from them. And this is where the hidden anger comes out. You won't believe how many people. Believe it or not, a few of them I actually let one, once or twice get up here. But you won't believe how many people that, that do their best try to get behind that pulpit. Come on. Is that right, Elder Dub? They make petitions, boy, they want, they want to get by in there. You know why? Because they want to teach you something. In other words, they want to spew out some spirits. Yeah. Then they get mad when I don't let them get back there. I had to run these elders down to get them back there. <laughs> Where y'all getting back at? Oh, okay, we'll be there. <laughs> I remember some time ago we had a, a guy up here that wanted to preach. We, we let him get behind that pulpit. That booger in the middle of service decided he was going to take a siesta. He did. He just went over and sit down next to the pulpit. He said, man, there's something going on in here. I had to sit down for a minute. <laughs> yeah, we all sit around looking at each other like, this guy don't know what's going on. I had another preacher come up here. We had a, a, a Baptist preacher. Go ahead and preach. He goes, man, I ain't never had so much fear in my life until I got behind that place, boy. I was so scared. I said, but preacher, you preach all the time. Man, that's terrifying up there. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and we be sitting back. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. They being stupid, not realizing that they're dealing with a real man of Yahweh. Because we've been raised Gentiles. Yes, sir. I'm the first and the last to tell you I ain't no different than anybody. Right. The on. only difference between you and I is the anointing. Hallelujah. That's, That's it. Yep. Yes, sir. Amen. That's it. True. That is it. Hallelujah. I stink just like you do. I have to take a bath just like you do. Yes, I do. And just like everybody else. The difference is the anointing. Galatians 2 6. But these who seem to be somewhat, whosoever they are, make no matter to me, y'all accepted no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Now, if the Apostle Saul had to deal with stuff like that way back then, what makes you think it's done stop today? I got old mothers in this church right here used to be preachers. They'll tell you, man, they, they, I got a few of them in there. They used to, they used to preach. 
They ain't preaching no more, but they preaching. Preaching holiness in quiet and confidence. Being good examples. Oh, hallelujah. Get that, brother Shane. We're going to go into Old Covenant too, all right? What time is it? Woo-wee. Man, what a time fly we having fun. <laughs> you got a brother saying, read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now watch this. Let's go back. This is Paul talking, right? To the church of Galatians, right? How could these people be removed unless the Father had took these people and drew them to him? The only way they could be removed is somebody was spitting in these people's ear to get them away from Paul. Come on. That's why he's talking like that. We just got finished showing you last week that the men of Yah, the word speaks through them. The spirit does. Yes, sir. Didn't we? Yes, sir. Read on. Which is not another. There ain't no other gospel except one. But there be some that trouble you. There be some that do what? Trouble you. No, they inspire you. Trouble. They give you inspiration. Trouble you. They encourage you. Trouble you. Notice, you should go ahead and take notice. That when these people are talking to you, if your spirit gets drawn down, you, you start getting on heaviness, don't you got any sense of any discernment to know what's going on? Come on, come on? You're getting troubled. Read on. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. Well, read on. Let's see how they do this. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm-hmm. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be recursed. If you hear somebody preaching anything contrary to what Paul is preaching, what I'm preaching, let them all be cursed. Amen. Every single one. Let them all be an anathema. Every one of them. Read on. For do I now persuade men now or you question. You got to ask, do I persuade men or y'all? Read on. Or do I seek to please men? What, y'all need to answer that question for yourself. Am I seeking to please you or do I please the Father? the Father? Read on. For if I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Man, I tell you what, Paul talked tough, don't he? You know how he's talking to these people? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what people want you to do today, please, they want you to preach a word, teach something that is acceptable to them. And if you can't preach and teach what's acceptable to them, they kick the traces. That's what the Gentile liberty gives them. You're going to be able to kick the traces in the kingdom. Read on. But I certify you, brethren, mm-hmm. that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It ain't after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of of Jesus Christ. Paul personally got this revelation by the Messiah himself. Because he had already grew up in the school of the Pharisees. Persecuting the assembly. You know somebody zealous of the law. He had to be retooled. Yeah he did. He had to unlearn a lot of stuff. So that he could learn. He had to put away a lot of things. Yeah religiously. So he could learn the Messiah. And the Messiah had to teach him himself. We have the spirit of truth that's teaching us today. Because there ain't nothing in this. Y'all think, have y'all ever thought about the ministry that we're in? You ever thought about this? Name another ministry that does pretty much what we're doing. That has the balance that we have. Let me put it like that. Name a ministry that has the balance that we have. I'll break it down real quick. All right? We keep the commandments. You have other people keep the commandments. But we keep the commandments and we cast out devils. But they don't believe in casting out devils. Then there's other people believe in keeping the commandments. But they don't believe in keeping y'all's feast. But we believe in keeping the feast. Oh, so we need to start comparing ourselves then, right? Then other people, hey, we don't believe in holiness. We don't have to do all that. Our women don't need to wear head coverings. Boy, you should have heard my little teaching the other day in the dining hall. Brother Jamie, Sister Heather. Ball head. That was a good teaching. I, matter of fact, I, I, I taught on it so good, I even made a 
I'm going to probably make it a next newsletter. Since all you dumb dumbs couldn't get the first one. The head covering is right for women. Especially of Hebrew heritage, Israelite heritage. You're going to be an Israelite, should be wearing that head covering. The reason why you don't wear it because you refuse to get clear with Yah. But you're going to answer to him for it, though. Come on. Read on. Oh, that's it. We didn't be hit. Look at this. All right, many examples given in the first covenant, men of Yah always possess power. Power hasn't always been just in the renewed covenant. Now, uh, Yah's men have always had power. To show that the spirit was upon them. Yes, yes. Elisha. Miracles in the cover. 2 Kings 6, 5. But as one as failing a beam. This is the guy that was, had an axe. He had borrowed somebody's axe. Okay. The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said. Alas master. For it was borrowed. And the man of Yah. The man of who? Yeah. And the man of who? Yeah. The man of Yah. Said where fell it. And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it thither, and the iron did swim. Now, that's something iron swimming. Yeah. <coughs> Can you imagine that one? Yeah, on. They go get it. That's some serious power right there. Therefore, he said, take it up, and he put it out of his hand and took it. Now, look at that. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Yes, sir. Yeah, they went, straight, they went straight to the man of Yah over something as simple as an axe handle. 2 Kings 8, 4. And then, king, uh, then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of Yah, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. And it came to pass, as he was telling uh, the king, how he had restored a dead body to life. What? You mean a, a dead body was coming to life even back then? Mm -hmm. Wow. That behold, the woman whose son had restored, restored to life cried to the king for her house and her land, and Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha had restored to life. And the spirit was upon him. Spirit is in us. Elisha again. First Kings 17, 13. And Elisha said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thither Elijah, a little cake first, and bring it hither to me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now, today, you, I can see, I can hear our American mindset now. Why that insensitive false prophet? These people are starving, and he wants that woman, that widow woman, to take the last drop of her food and feed his butt, <coughs> then to feed them. And I tell them true. Yeah, and I tell them true. And I tell, ain't that the attitude of the day? No wonder we have no faith. We have no faith. That's the way Americans would talk today. What? You want me to give you what? My last morsel of bread? No. We're going to eat and we're going to die. Then he had to tell her, I mean, you ain't going to die. Huh? And it came to pass after these things. That the son of the woman, oh man, how did I do that? I skipped around. Anyway, y'all get it. But anyway, pay attention. I need y'all to pay attention to this thought. I'm going back to this woman, okay? I'm all over the place. And it came to pass that after these things, then the son of that woman, the mistress of the house, meaning the owner of the house, fell sick because, you know, the mistress of her husband had passed away, widow. Was, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath in him. Man, I, I put, turned it around. And Elijah said, and she said unto Elijah, oh, what have I to do to thee? Oh man, oh, this is later. This is going on later. This is the same chapter. I mean, this is the next chapter later. This is the next chapter later, all right? This woman, the same little woman, has, is housing Elijah. Oh, you can see that today, huh? Can you imagine that today? Can you imagine that today? Imagine Misty is a, a widowed woman. And I, I'm Elijah. Hey, bake me a cake. I'm going to stay at your house for a while. Oh, hell. We finished in this country. You know, I can see it now. Man, did you see, you see that man, you see that man coming out of her house? Hmm, well, I wonder what they doing. They got to be doing the nasty. <laughs> this woman was housing the prophet. Boy, that's different in our culture today, isn't it? Amen. I said this woman was housing the prophet. Yeah. With a woman. Amen. Huh? 
And here she is. You stand in my house. Man, are y'all? Man, my sins must be visited upon me. You know, all the things I've done. Well, how'd she come up with that? Look at this. Oh, thou man of y'all, are thou come to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee? Thou man of y'all, are thou come? What in the world? Brother Juan? See, I, had, man, I got my slide going today, and Brother Juan said, hey, I put some transitions in there for you. I go, you did what? <laughs> I just, man, I just took them all out. <laughs> Did you not say that, brother? Yes, sir. Okay, because people don't think anything. I'm making this stuff up. <laughs> First Kings 17, 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and he carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon his own bed. Laid the son on his own bed. Look at this. Today in the condition. What happens today? As soon as something happens, Satan has it set up for people to run to the hospital, and a man of Yah cannot get to those in need. They didn't have no hospitals back then. No. Person, hey, we got a son dead right here, man. He, huh? Man, y'all, you got to do something about this. First thing we do, we get all excited. We call 911. They go rush them off to the hospital, and now we can't get to them. You come to the hospital, you're looking so pathetic and stuff. You have your Bible in hand, all religious looking. Now you know what we've been relegated to? Get about... Call up and get a prayer line going. Get about 50 saints to pray. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Come on, amen. The emphasis is we can't even get to the people today. Come on, amen. Amen. See, a lot of these things that's come up on us today, they didn't have no problem back then because they done tore us up in this environment. Come on, amen. The food is jacked up. Yes. Religious. If he's able to make it to the hospital, there's so much unbelief, a real miracle cannot take place. Usually, it would have to take many saints praying everywhere against the forces of doubt and unbelief. And I tell them true. Going back. And he cried unto Yahweh. Notice Elijah did he cry unto who? And he said, O Yahweh my El, has thou bought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned? By slaying her son. Now wait a minute. You hear the prophet talking to the father? Yes, sir. Amen. Yahweh, you mean to tell me you're going to kill this woman's son? Bring an evil up on it? I'm, I'm your man. I'm living here. Amen. Come on. Amen. Why did Elijah pray like this? Look at this. Persistence and contact. I want you to pay attention. And he stressed himself upon the child three times. Boy, I can see the accusations on that one, huh? Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. I can see the accusations on that one. Boy, can, can y'all, with this, with this modern day mindset, can y'all? Can, can, boy, that's why I tell a lot of people, that's why I say confidence. When a lot of times, a lot of times I'm praying, folks, I'm listening to it, and, and, and I'm hearing what they're saying and stuff, and certain things I pray, I don't even let nobody know what I'm doing. I tell them, keep your mouth shut. Because first thing they're going to do is they're going to accuse me. And the people used to get healed. First thing they'll do is accuse me falsely. Yeah, they do. Yeah, 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 they do. They will accuse me falsely. And I'm trying to heal somebody, and your perverted ass Gentile mind is all in the way. I can imagine what Elijah would have. Man, he got to call everything under the sun today. They'll call him a dead pedophile necromancer. Who's them people that have sex with the dead? Necromancer. That's what they call them. Necrophiliacs. Some kind of men are y'all, you is. That's, I'm just telling you, that's the mindset we're in today. Let's see what his actual word. He stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto Yahweh. He's still calling unto Yahweh. All right? And said, oh, Yahweh, my hell, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. Ask him. He's still calling on Yahweh. Ask him. Let this child's soul come into him. Notice, he's still asking. He already done talked to him once. He's still talking to him. I want y'all to pay attention. Real belief is manifested by persistence. I'm going to teach y'all something. We said all this to get to this point. Now you can wake up out of your sleeping stupor now. Because we said all this to get to this point. Real belief is manifested by persistence. That's 
Not like we have been trained to think today. Real belief today, people believe the philosophy of men who are controlled by Satan. They tell you if you ask more than once, then you are operating in unbelief. Y'all hear me? Real belief is keeping the faith to continue to ask until you see manifested what you've asked for. It's about application and action. You keep on asking until it comes to pass. And Yahweh heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See thy son liveth. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of Yah, and that the word of Yahweh is in thy mouth is true. What did he do? Bought somebody back to life. I had a woman sit there and die on us right there and serve. Bought her back to life, man. The whole family went off in unbelief. Oh, you see how jacked up we are? Yes, sir. I got two witnesses. She was dead. Sister Vicky and Brother Rich. One well, passed out dead right there. Some of you were sitting in here where it happened. And she was dead for quite a while. I kept on preaching. Looked back there, kept preaching, looked back at It got my attention, started distracting. Man, y'all go back there and check it out. You know the reason why I picked them two? Both of them ex military. I know they know how to check vital signs. We had old arrogant, we had this other guy who believed himself to be some type of philosopher. He had a doctrine. You know what his doctrine was? He didn't believe in using soap. He didn't believe in you, Brad. He didn't believe in using soap. I said, look at here, you nasty nigga. I don't care what kind of philosophy you come up with. You better throw some soap on your stinky bucket. We don't want you oppressing us around here. And he's white. And he fancied himself to be some kind of man of y'all, Elder Bullock. And you know what I did? I said, hey, this is your opportunity. You love running your mouth. You love doing all your philosophy. Hey, is your... I looked at him. He... I said, I'll be damned. Look at here. There's an opportunity for him to show what he believes, and he backs out on it. Anyway... Anyway, it's just the truth. Yes, yes. Ask some of the saints that was here. Come on. It's just, yes, it is. They don't believe the book. They simply don't believe the book. Israel, you must be taught how to think right and to function right because none of us don't. We all have been learned in the ways of the Gentiles. We, we do not think right. I'm telling you, I've been after that for years. We don't process thought right. In order for this to happen, there has to be a lot of tearing down of your previous condition processed by the way of the Gentiles. Elisha and Nahum, 2 Kings 5.14, he went down and he dipped himself in Jordan seven times, seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of Yahweh. He did that on the, because the Yenna, man of Yahweh. I remember years and years and years ago, this was a long time ago. This was probably about 18, 19 years ago. Remember your back was hurting? That dog came up to we had a prayer line then. I'm still got the residue apostolic on me. You know what I mean? We had a prayer line. He came up to me and I looked at him. I said, eat some cabbage. Is that what I said down there? Yes, sir. Did I say eat some cabbage? Yes, sir. That dog went and bought a whole head of cabbage. ate the whole thing. <laughs> I, I said eat some, not the whole head. <laughs> Did your back get healed? Yes, sir. Back got totally healed. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Come on. Never mind. Boy, flesh is, with spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, isn't it? And his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Lesson learned. Get your ass out of <laughs> Get your ass out from hiding and go do the Father's will. Why? Because he is with us. And I said that because in Elijah dealing with, you remember he was running for Jezebel. And here's the father moving the mountains and got everything else going on. Y'all write this down so y'all can read this passage, okay? Yeah, I mean, he's doing all this. And, and here's the, one of the most powerful prophets that has ever lived. And we continue to keep hearing his name, not only in the Old Testament, but in the Renewed Covenant. And he's running from Jezebel. And you can see Yahweh now. What are you doing? 
I tell you what, you better get your ass off this mountain and get back down and do what I told you to do. <laughs> Elijah. Now what Elijah's doing also is reminding us of our human, our humanity. He had fears too. He can be under the anointing and stuff, but then sometimes that reality hits your fear, hits you and grip you, bro. Ah, oh, then your humanity starts showing up, and y'all has to come and encourage you. That was some kind of mountain for him to be on, too. Read that one, too. Write that down and read it, okay? I'd love to go over the whole thing. Did y'all get it? No, no. Second Kings 2, verses 1 through 18. These are good passages for you to remember. Because what you're going to do is you're going to see how the anointing was there. All right. You also remember Elijah and Elijah. Remember, um, Elijah asked Elijah for a double portion. Yes, sir. Y'all remember that? All right. Elijah said, "I'm not the one that can give you this stuff." Now, but you remember what Elijah did, right? Here you go again. Same one that they gave Jezebel hell, right? He took his mantle and he smoked the water, and the water split. This is some kind of man of God, huh? And the water split. I'm telling you, I know what's going on with us. Captivity. We're too far removed from our people. And that's why most of you, you get mad at me. You don't get mad at me because I'm telling a lie. You get mad at me because I'm telling the truth and you don't want to do it. Because your mind functions like Gentiles. Oh, but you're going to be humbled. Yes, you are too. You, you will be humbled. And then... And, and by the way, Elijah did not go up in a chariot either. I don't care what the cartoons say. <laughs> Elijah didn't go up in a chariot. Adam and Eve didn't have belly buttons. Elijah didn't go up in no chariot. Did you know that? That's why I'm looking at you. <laughs> Elijah didn't go up in no chariot. What's wrong with you people? Oh, we got some more fairy tales again. Elijah went up in a whirlwind. I know they gave y'all the fairy tale. Elijah went up in the chariot. He got swooped up in. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. The enemy, through many captivity and slavery, has stolen faith, our faith, and has given us religion. And it's time for us to take our faith back. That's all we got. That's what we got today, religion and stuff. See that word importunity? Importunity, shameless or imprudence. Now, brother Shane, read this one. <clears throat> we may cut this off right here. Getting a little long. This is good stuff, though. You got it, brother Shane? Yes. King James. Well, listen to this. This is a woman of importunity. All right? I want y'all to pay attention to the example, okay? Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. What did he say? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. In other words, you just keep on praying and don't faint. Is that right? Read. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not Yah. He didn't care nothing about the Father. Read. Neither regarded man. Mm-hmm. And there was a widow in that city. Oh, y'all say, how much power these women have? This man don't fear y'all, and he ain't regarding man. This is a tough dude. And he got authority too? Or he's going to be bought to his knees. Watch this. Read. And there was a widow in that city, and she came That's why you sisters get on my nerves. You start complaining to me about your husbands or somebody doing you wrong. I'm like, So the Carol be getting pissed. You gonna get thrown in jail. You gonna get this and that. How you gonna preach then? Shut up. Well, y'all people wouldn't know this unless you're a man of y'all, though. When you're responsible for sheep, y'all 
understand that necessity is laid upon you. You become responsible. You just ain't no fly by night, wake up at 9 o'clock, get a, get a coffee bought to you on your desk, answer a few emails, go to lunch with the boys, come back and answer a few more emails, and then take off for brunch and then go home. That ain't my job. Prepare a little sermon. I'm a personal pastor. Watch this woman right here. No, this man don't fear y'all. He don't even care. He ain't scared of no man. But boy, he's going to be brought to his knees by this little old woman. This little bitty woman. Watch. Read. <laughs> and she came unto him saying, What does she say? Avenge me of mine adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Read on. And he would not for a while. She ain't God. Not for how long? A while. A while. Read on. But afterward he said within himself, What did he say? Though I fear not Yah, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. In other words, she ain't going to stop coming. <laughs> Every time he turn around, hey, we got judgment due to who it is. this woman again. Oh, Jesus. Man, here she come again. This woman troubling me. <laughs> and now his conscience getting him too. At night, he got to do something. Read on. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she <laughs> weary me. Uh, I'm going to avenge her because if I don't, this woman going to keep on coming. I'm going to be weary. <laughs> Read what that king said again. I will avenge her by her continual coming. She weary me. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Read on. And the master said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Now, he's going to break it down. Now, this was an unjust judge. Right. Y'all hear that? This was an unjust judge. We know he's a just judge, right? Now, if the unjust judge is judging like this, let's see what the just judge says. Read. And shall not Yah avenge his own elect? Whoa, 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 whoa. Shall not Yah avenge his own elect if what? Which cry day and night unto him. When, when are you supposed to be crying? Yeah. Day and night. We got a lot of adversaries. We have a lot of adversaries. We need to be crying to Yah to avenge us of our adversaries. Y'all hear me, Israel? Yes, and we need to keep on at it until it get done. Yes, and we need to keep going until we weary him. Yes, look at him looking at me. Yeah, we do. We need to keep going and keep on going, keep on going, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. Keep on. Read on. Though he bear long with them. He's bearing long with us. Read on. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. How, how long is it going to take for him to avenge us? Speedily. Speedily. After he get finished being long suffering with us. Because remember the judge, he wouldn't for a while. But that woman kept coming. Persistence. Same thing with the just judge. Read on. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? Will he earth? find it though? See that? What is he now? He's contrasting this with real belief, huh? With, with, with real belief. All the time we talk about let y'all fight our battles, but how many times you gonna go to him night and day? He's giving you the blueprint. I'm gonna avenge you of your adversaries. You just come to me night and day. You getting on my nerves? Yeah, you are. But just keep asking. You're my elect. Amen. I will avenge you of your adversary. Yes. And don't. No, let me. What was scripture? Do not be weary in well. well doing, it's do, you're doing well by getting in front of the Father's face. Amen. Wear him out. Amen. Father, you said. Amen. And you better not come like that either. <laughs> don't, don't do what I just did. That's just theatrics in the example. You better humble yourself. When you read that part in there where Moses says, if you're going to block, if you're going to kill them, then you block my name out of the, that hyphen. Or that little line, that's a very long pause. Because he's saying something is getting ready to put his soul in jeopardy. He told the king, yeah, Moses, he wasn't no fool now. You go to the king humble, but you keep wearing him out. Keep reminding him. 
like the prophet said, put me in remembrance at my work. But in order to do that, you need to declare thou so that you be justified. That's what the prophet Isaiah, yes, Yahoo said. If you'd follow instruction books. Read on. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Ho! Oh, Y'all hear that? Yes, Why did he say all this? Well, he just told you. I told you this story because of these people who trust in themselves. That they were righteous. Watch this. You know how these people believe they're so righteous? I put so on there. They're righteous because they despise others. If you check it out, you know I don't despise no man. These people get puffed up and they despise people. They despise dominions. Despise dignities. Uh-oh. I think the Father's trying to get us in order. That's what I'm saying. And you know the reason why? So he can move on us. Read on. That's it. Read that one. This is good, isn't it? Hmm? This is really good, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. So don't stop praying to the father. Read. And it came to pass uh -huh. that as he was praying in a certain place. He was praying in a certain place. Come on. When he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Master. What master what? Teach us to pray. Teach us. Don't we want to know how to pray? Yes. Read on. As John taught, also taught his disciples. Read. And he said unto them, when ye pray. When you pray what? Say. Say what? Our Father, uh -huh. which art in heaven, yep. hallowed be thy name. Now, he ain't telling you to repeat it just like that. Number one, order, acknowledge the Father. Yeah. Right. Read on. Thy kingdom come. And pray for his kingdom, mean his will be done on you in this earth. Yes, sir. Just like it is in Shemaim. Read on. Thy will be done as in heaven, no, no, so no. in earth. Your will be done. Thy your will. will be done. Thy will. Oh, yeah, thy will. But when you pray, you pray that your will be done, though, don't you? Don't you? Read on. Give us day by day our daily bread. Thank you for our daily provisions. Read on. And forgive us our sins. Uh, forgive us of who? Our sins. I wonder why that's always in there. Read on. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Well, of course, you know, if we ain't got no sins, we ain't have to forgive nobody who is indebted to us then. But, you know, the Father is not approaching that way. He's approaching us that we're coming to him unclean. We got all these people around here that want to pass judgment on everybody else being so unclean and stuff, and they make themselves over-righteous. I guarantee they don't never pray to the Father and ask him to forgive them of their sins. I bet they believe they've already arrived. Read on. And lead us not into temptation. Man, I pray that you keep the devil away from me. Come on. But deliver us from evil. Read on. And he said unto him, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me three loaves. Y'all hear that? Now you got a friend. And this friend got to have great patience when you come knocking on the door at midnight talking about give me a loaf of bread. <laughs> Read on. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me. Man, I got somebody that came and visit me. Brother, man, can you get up out of bed and give me a loaf of bread? Read on. And I have nothing to say before him. Well, ain't the first thing you thinking. What do you mean you ain't got nothing to say to you, man? You, you know how to set your fast? No, don't you know he coming to something like that? I mean, what, what's up, man? He come waking me up at midnight for a loaf of bread. Read on. And he from within shall answer and Notice, say. he said he from within. In other words, how many times people talk to you, they getting on your nerves, but you ain't saying nothing, but you thinking it. You got a lot of words to say to them, but you keeping them right here. You're holding your tongue. That's what he's saying when this man is saying within. Read on. Trouble me not. The door is now shut and my <laughs> children are with me in bed. See, that's what he's saying within, but he's not expressing this to his friend, though. Read on. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, come on, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Y'all hear that? He don't want to, but he's going to give it to him simply because he's his friend. 
See the story? See the account? Read on. And I say unto you. What did you say, Father? Ask, and it shall be given you. Ah. Seek. Seek. And ye shall find. Yeah. Knock. And what? And it shall be opened unto you. Well. For See, if, but you have to understand, we live in a society now where you're not accustomed to doing these things because you're too prideful to. So you have to change your mindset. You are y'all's children. Your father, it's his job to provide for you. He can't provide if you don't ask. And a lot of times you can't ask because of your theology that you've embraced from Christianity. A lot of times you ain't got no answers for nothing, but you can't, hey, you're going to do everything you can to figure it out with your cardinal mind. And, and yet and still, we have an Abba Father sitting right up there waiting. And you'll never even know how real he is until you start calling on him. Now, I'm going to tell you what, a lot of times what keeps you from calling on the Father, your hidden sins. You're too ashamed to call on him. Hmm? There's something you know you're not meeting y'all's conditions. You don't even want to talk to him. Afraid to even ask. Uh oh, ain't not telling the truth. He he gave all his accounts, and then he tells us, "Ask and you shall receive; seek and you shall find; knock and it shall be open." Ask, seek, and knock. Isn't that something? Read on. For everyone that asketh, what do they do? Receiveth. Hey, but, but but if you don't receive it in a certain time, you stop asking. Yes, come on. Y'all don't operate in your time. No. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, I ask. What? What? One or two times you done? I suppose Daniel, when he's praying them twenty-one days, he prayed one day and he sit and waited the rest of the day. I suppose this woman that troubled that king, she only just went one time. But the scripture said he, he, she kept on coming. He's the most powerful man in that providence right here. And the one thing that's on his nerves is one woman that won't stop coming to him. Because there's no way that she could avenge her own self with the adversary because the adversaries are too powerful. Sometimes we got people that's coming against us that they got too many demonic powerful spirits. We got to get to the father to get to that. Sometimes we got people we know that they ain't for our best person and stuff. We don't know exactly who it is, but the Father does. So, and we know that what's going on because we can feel it spiritually. So we have to ask the Father to avenge us of our adversaries. Sometimes we're in need. He said he's going to supply all our needs according to his riches and what? Glory and stuff. Not what you want because you want a Lamborghini, but you need transportation. What do you care what mode he come in? He could give you a go-kart. <laughs> you may want a Lamborghini. He'll turn around and give you a 75 Chevy. Work good. You're too prideful to get in there because you don't want nobody to see you in your 75 Chevy. So you'd rather keep your high lofty rear end sitting in the house wearing out shoe leather walking everywhere than actually having a car to get from one place to the other. Father could send somebody over and say, hey, I noticed you ain't got no transportation. Here's a car. Gave you a gift. And you're going to complain about the gift. Hmm. Ain't that Americans? Yes, sir. You are literally complain about it. You didn't have nothing before. Now you got something. Now you're complaining. Ungrateful, yep. unthankful, and unholy. Yep. Father, I need a home. So he gives you a shack to test and try you. See if you're going to be faithful in that first. Before he can graduate you to something else. But oh no, you got to murmur and complain every step of the way. See what the American spirit has done to us? Ungrateful, unthankful, 
unholy. Father, I need some clothes. Somebody go and bring you some clothes from Goodwill. <laughs> well, we are, what in the world is this? Ungrateful, unthankful, unholy. Oh, you admit you're in a temporary state, but boy, you want to live like a king, don't you? Ungrateful, unthankful, unholy. Huh? We wicked. Read on. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. If a son shall ask bread of any one of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Hey, if Zephan ask you for a piece of bread, are you going to give him a stone? Why? He asked for bread. Read on. Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? I don't know. In America, they make it eat everything. <laughs> they go, they eat snake hunting. They go snake hunting. Read on. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Would he? Not a father. Read on. If ye then, being evil... Now know, look at the place where he's coming from. We evil. Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yes, sir. And we evil. Yeah. And we are. Yeah. I agree with it. Yeah. Read on. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. Yep. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? That's because that's the same Holy Spirit that's going to lead and guide you in all truth. That's the same Holy Spirit that's going to give you wisdom also. That's the same Holy Spirit because it's not by power nor by might, but by his spirit that's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Yes, sir. But we're too intelligent today, though. We got it all figured out. We got the Father in a box. No wonder life ain't working out for you. You know how many people think I'm stupid because we live way out here in the country? We're going to find out, ain't we? We're going to find out real fast. Yeah, we are, too. I'm going to find out real quick. I'll stay out here with the ticks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At least our chickens can eat the ticks and we can eat the chickens. Right. Now how smart are y'all? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Shabbat shalom. So when you pray, continue to keep asking. But faith, come by here. So it is very important for y'all to listen and let these sayings sink deep down in your heart. Now y'all hear me? Let us stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these truths. We pray to say and seek deep down our hearts in my name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. Be encouraged, saints. King coming.